just about set to kick with Louisville and Kentucky, the battle for the Governor's Cup. The Cardinals have put a couple of whippings on the cans of late. Jim Dynam, what can we expect to see in this one? You're going to see a lot of studs out on the field. They're not going to be in the Kentucky Derby. They're going to be out there playing for the Louisville Cardinals. I really like Brom. I like them to win big. Amede, what do you think? Well, I agree with Coach. I like Louisville in this game, and I think the best running back named Bush east of the, east of the Mississippi is playing for Louisville. Yeah, you know, you could look at college football this year, at least among running backs, and say that the Bush administration is pretty strong on, on both sides of the coast country. Coast huh? across the nation. But uh, keep an eye on uh, the wide receiver, Montrell Jones. I think he's going to play big in this game. But you have to look at Brian Brown. Now he's in the leadership position. I want to see how he takes over as the controller of this offense. I don't know if I've ever seen a guy win Conference Player of the Year as Stefan LaForce did, and his backup was Conference USA Freshman of the Year. Louisville now in the Big East and set to go against Kentucky. ESPN welcomes you back on campus. Presented by State Farm. We're in this together. The passage of time. The repeating patterns. The changes. And together, we celebrate the promise of hope a new season brings. By honoring traditions. Respecting leaders. Remembering champions. A ritual hard to resist or replace. While we raise our voices for a game that brings us and keeps us together through the years, the circle is unbroken. Fall is here. And so is college football. The barbecues are fired up. The tailgaters are having a great time on a beautiful day in Lexington. It's the game for state's bragging rights. A battle for the Governor's Cup. As Kentucky squares off against Louisville, it's a sellout crowd at Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington. Hi, everybody. With the coach, Bill Curry, I'm Gary Bender, and welcome to our first ESPN Classic Game of the Week. Bill, we're going to see tonight the most celebrated recruit in Louisville history in Brian Brock. We are. And this guy has really impressed us in visiting with him this week. He has, Gary. If we were to write a book about Brian today, we would have to entitle it Great Expectations. He comes from the famous Brom football family. His high school career is the stuff of legend. 10,579 yards. Unbelievable. Three state championships at Trinity High School. And now he takes over the number one offense in America. 49.8 points per game a year ago. And the question is, can he handle this pressure? And the answer, if you look at every indication from his previous part of his life, has to be in the affirmative. He likes the big stage. He does. Now, Kentucky, on the other hand, Bill, they're excited about their quarterback. He's a sophomore, Andre Woodson. And Rich Brooks told us this week he's never been around a quarterback that throws the ball as well as he does. Yes, that's right. And Joker Phillips, the new offensive coordinator for Kentucky, says, I can't wait to see this kid play. Well, after watching him throw and looking into his eyes and talking with him, I can't wait to see him either. He is sophisticated. He understands the game of football. He knows that he has a lot to learn. That learning process is going to be subjected to a trial by fire today. And the person of Cardinal Blitzes, Gary, they're going to come at him from every direction. And the way he handles that pressure will largely depend, uh, determine Kentucky's success on offense. Today, a huge event for the state of Kentucky. A showdown in the Bluegrass State. A rivalry game between the Cats and Guards coming up next. Louisville invades Lexington, seeking their eighth straight win in a row. And they're going to be led by a new quarterback, Brian Brom with more on the story. Here is Dave Bryan. All right, Gary, thanks so much. You could not ask for a better atmosphere for college football here on the field in Lexington for Brian Brom's first career start. 
Some 70,000 fans are expected today. And as you can hear, this game is completely sold out. It's exactly the kind of atmosphere that Brian Rom wanted to face. He told us this week he loves the big-time college football stage. After all, this is his team now. He's more than ready for the pressure. I thrive on the big game. I like to play in big games. Uh, when everyone's excited, everyone in the community is getting excited about things. And, uh, you know, coming into big games and big time atmospheres is, is just really fun. And uh, some people don't like it. They might shy away from it, don't want to want to be in the spotlight. But I think uh, when the light comes on, uh, a lot of guys on our team are like this, where the lights come on and they come to play. Brian is the fourth bra to play football at Louisville. His dad and two older brothers were stars for the Cardinals as well. His brother Greg tells us going back to high school, Brian was always calm under pressure. Loves the big moment. Throughout the broadcast, Gary will tell you much more about this very famous Louisville football family. That's right, Dave. We'll have to talk about that turkey bowl they had every year. Thanksgiving Day, this whole family, they started out with tackle football and eventually to touch the ball. This is Bobby Petrino entering his third year as a cards hit man. First two years, posted 20 wins. Best two-year mark in Louisville history. His cards have won seven in a row, including a Liberty Bowl victory over Boise State. And last season finished number six in the final AP poll, the highest finish in school history. This guy, Bill, is an outstanding play caller. That's what all the opposing coaches talk about. What great football coaches do is not just have good systems, but it, it's when they call the plays. They have uncanny timing, and they call it when you least expect a particular kind of play, a reverse or some sort of trickery. And now Rich Brooks, also in his third year, with the Wildcats. 6-17 and 17 record thus far, fighting for his coaching life. Anxious to see how much better his team is this season. He feels the Cats are improved athletically, but a very young team, still unproven. A team fighting for respect, and Bill, we talked about this a lot. They need to have some success early. They need early success. Louisville could probably overcome some turnovers. Kentucky really cannot afford them. And so, at stake the governor's cup it's 33 inches tall weighs 110 pounds and uh, all started in 1994 my partner here bill curry was one of the reasons they got it started up again and you can see the cardinals have won five of the last six and they shut out kentucky last year well, you hope that it will be a good rivalry and very competitive all the time, but we just felt like at the time that we had to have a rivalry in state to bolster football, and I think that's exactly what's happened in the high school ranks. The high school coaches seem to really appreciate it. Louisville has won the toss. They did not defer. They're going to receive the football. Scott Long will go back along with Broderick Clark, and Broderick Clark had a 100-yard return against Kentucky two years ago. This is what Petrino does. When he wins the toss, he doesn't defer like other coaches. He takes the football because he's got this great offense. And getting ready to kick it off as a true freshman. I imagine this guy's heart is in his throat. Tim Masjay, he is out of Murray, Kentucky. He will handle the punts as well as the kickoffs. Can you imagine making a debut before 70,000 fans? I'd get in the wrong huddle. <laughs> I wouldn't know which end was up. So Masjay ready to go. And the Governor's Cup, it's underway. He hit it right down the middle. No pressure for this guy. And it's going to be returned by Broderick Clark. Clark out to the 20, dives, and is airborne to the 23-yard line. 23-yard return. And you can see the intensity early in this game. Ryan Brom, we've talked about him, the most celebrated recruit in Louisville history, gets his first start. An ultra-talented sophomore, has tremendous poise. And Bill, I just can't get over this guy, the maturity that he has for his age. He came straight out of high school, came in this game as a reserve last year, and led Louisville to their first touchdown in the game against Kentucky, a 13-play drive. So Brom, who played in all but one game last year, will take the snap. Comes to the near side and makes a completion to Jameer Davis. Check that. That catch is going to be made instead. Out to the 31-yard line. It's going to bring up a second down. And here now is the Louisville offense. Jones, a senior at one of the wide receivers. We mentioned Clark Barnage had seven catches last year. Four of them going for touchdown. Bush is a 250-pounder. Up front, Latou is an All-American. Spitz, an All-Conference USA player last year. Wood getting his first start. Corbin, huge right guard for the Cardinals. Second down coming up. 
Rom gives off to Bush, the man we mentioned. He thunders forward. He's got a first down to the 44. First down, 12-yard pickup. As we take a look at Kentucky defensively, B.J. Parsons from California, Mills, their strongest guy. Melch, a veteran, they think he could be playing in the NFL. Darrell White was moved to defense again because they went from the 3-4 to the 4-3. Braxton Kelly is a true freshman, and he's playing with his former high school teammate, Wesley Woodyard. Mohamed Abdullah is their best defensive player, two-time all-conference pick. McClinton, they're hoping to have some consistency at the safety spot. First down now, just short of the 45-yard line, and here comes Bush again. He bangs his way across the 45 to the 46. Boy, is this guy big. He weighs 250 pounds, and Braxton Kelly, the true freshman there, met him in the hole. He stepped up and tackled him the way you're going to have to tackle this guy. He tackled him about thigh high, and he hit him before he got on track. We were talking yesterday, and I confessed, if I were a linebacker and I saw him coming off tackle, I'm not sure I'd want to stick my face across his number, that one and nine. And he is a load. Colby Smith gives him a breather. Smith coming in, replacing Bush at the running back spot. The Cardinals have a first down. They have it across the 45 to the 46-yard line. Brian Brom in the shotgun. He's going to complete the pass inside the 50 to the 47. That's Robert Clark, the senior out of Birmingham. In 03, he had six catches against Kentucky for 94 yards. Watch Brian Brown's technique. Perfect throwing, follow through. The wrist turns outward, not inward. Perfect spiral right between the numbers. Double tight ends now on a third and two. Kentucky fans hoping for a stop. Watch play action here. Underneath center this time is Brown. Barney's the tight end will go in motion. Going to hand off to Colby Smith, trying to get wide. He's going to get the first down. Nice cut that time. Looked like they're going to string the play out, Bill, and all of a sudden he cut it nicely and picked up the first down. Kentucky's playing inspired defense right now. You can tell Mike Archer's theory right now is to keep people in play zone, keep the receivers and the backs in front of you, string it out and make the hit. He would have preferred that that happened behind the line of scrimmage. First down now at the Kentucky 45. Louisville has won five of the last six games, as we mentioned, last year with a shutout. The first shutout in the series history, 28 to nothing. Of course, that was played in Louisville. Here's a handoff to Bush, and Bush pounds it forward. Gets to the 35-yard line, and down he goes. A big burst up the field, and Marcus McClinton was there to make the tackle. Make that Colby Smith who was carrying on the play, and the tackle dropped him at the 35. A gain of 10 on the play, another first down. Devastating blocker, number 47, Dariante Taylor, the fullback, was a late recruit. They weren't sure where they were going to play him until they realized he could just knock people out of the hole on offense, and that's where he settled. Bush has come back in at the running back spot behind Brom. This is the initial series of the afternoon. Bush will come set to the near side. Brom is back to throw, double pumping. He dumps it off short to the near side to the 35. Comes Colby Smith. He's inside the 30 to the 28. He's going to be about three yards short of the first down. I tell you, this was a high-powered, balanced offense last year for the Cardinals. They averaged almost 50 points a game, 500 yards a game. They won the Liberty Bowl over Boise State 44-40. to They had five straight games, Bill, where they had 500-plus yards in offense. Well, Mike Archer did a nine-game takeoff on a meaning of statistical breakdown. They were 51% run. That's the surprising thing. They don't come out and just fling it around. They want to ram it down your throat. And they're spreading it out now. They have five wideouts on this set. Second down, three yards to go. Brom over the middle, and the catch made by Tinch. Joshua Tinch. And this is what Bobby Petrino told us this week. He thinks Tinch is going to have a great year because Brom sees the middle, and Tinch will go over the middle. So what do we mean when we say that Brom is a sophisticated middle-of-the-field passer? That means he can read windows. We asked Bobby Petrino where he got his theory. His father was a triple option running coach. He said, I just took it and extended it to read the windows between the linebackers. That's what you just saw. 14-yard pickup on the play. First down. Down for the Cardinals. 10.35 to go. First series of the game. And 
trying to hand off to Bush, and this time the Wildcats respond. Bush had no place to go that time. Kentucky doing a great job of swarming the play. That is Darrell White, a junior out of Middlesbrough, Kentucky, a former linebacker now playing defensive end. Mike Archer's going to have to have these guys slanting, stunning. That's what happens here. Darrell White, foo, left you, the left tackle, got inside him, made the hit in the backfield. Kentucky will have to take some calculated risk just like that one. Loss of two, second and 12 now. Inside, 10 minutes to go here in this first quarter. Clark, Tinch, and Bush inoffensively. Tinch will come in motion. Brian Brahm. Little half roll, now rolls out, up the field. The catch is made at the five by Tinch. Hikes his way inside the four. Very close to a first and goal. Bo Smith coming up after a 12-yard pickup. They needed 12, and that's just about what they got. Let's see where they mark the football. It is going to be a first and goal just inside the five-yard line. How do you keep people guessing? Handoff, handoff, then come off the handoff with a little boot, a little naked boot with Brom on the corner. He can run or throw. He is now five for five with these simple completions, the beauty of the Louisville offense. Darrell J. Taylor, the fullback, throwing a big block. They use him a lot. Barney just come in. Gio Cunini has come in. Double tight ends now on a first and goal inside the five. That's Gio Comini coming in motion, the big tight end. Gives off this time and not able to get into the end zone is Louisville. As slashing forward on that play is Bush. Bo Smith got a hand on him, tripped him up, and it's going to bring up a second and goal. Gary, early in the year, uh, early in the game last year, Louisville marched right down the field to the one-yard line and got stoned at the one, which gave Kentucky some momentum. They went in at the half, only down seven to nothing, came out in the second half and didn't play as well. So Mike Archer and his staff have to be hoping that they can pull that off again. Kentucky last year gave up 261 yards rushing against Louisville. They really struggled. That's the reason they've gone to the 4-3. Second and goal at the two. Hand off. Bush. Bush fighting to get in. Let's see if he did. He did not. Some of the players are indicating touchdown, but the officials are not. Well, those Lamar guys, Mills was there. Those guys love to officiate. <laughs> They're sure they know. Those linemen, instead of jumping up, putting their hands up, ought to be down there root hogging on the goal line. All those adages about root hog or die on the goal line, they're all true. Look at that smash. That's Wesley Woodyard and Braxton Kelly from LaGrange, Georgia right there, hitting that big back and knocking him back in. Third and goal, 13th play of the drive. And sneaking is Brian Brom, and we're waiting. Touchdown, Louisville. Brom taking it in. What an impressive drive by Bobby Petrino's team. The opening drive of the game. Seventy six yards, thirteen plays on the drive. Carmody, Arthur Carmody to attempt the point after, and he got it. Seven nothing. Bill, let's go back now. Take a look at Rob taking it in. There are a lot of coaches that are afraid to run that quarterback sneak, and we see the result. A very happy Brian Brown. The Cardinals strike first, 14 plays, 76 yards, 6 minutes and 38 seconds. Brom taking it in at the 8.22 mark. Kicking off is going to be Art Carmody. This is a guy who just added his 78th straight PAT. He set an NCAA record with 77 straight last year. The sophomore out of Shreveport, Louisiana. Keenan Burton and Drake Davis go back now for the Wildcats who will try to respond after a very impressive opening drive by Louisville. Harmony, a left footer, nails it. And there'll be no return on this. They'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. Burton fielding. It was good balance on that first drive, Bill, and not surprising because Louisville has done that all year long. And Andre Woodson will come in. Second start of his career, six foot five, 230 pound sophomore who Coach Brooks is so excited about, anxious to see how his big time ability fares today. But he has a gifted arm. The ball just leaps off his hand. On the 20 yard line, Woodson to take the snap. He did start one game last year against Auburn. 
He's going to quickly throw. There's a flag on the play. The completion was made out to the 30-yard line and gang tackled there. But as we mentioned, the flag was thrown instantly. Raphael Little was the guy who made the catch coming out of the backfield. Little has had a lot of problems injury-wise in preseason camp. They were concerned about his stability today. This is a Big Ten crew. This is Dave Whitboat, the referee. Big Ten crews do a marvelous job, highly respected by the coaches. And I respect Dave Perry, who's their supervisor. Yes, indeed. Offside defense, number 58, the penalty is declined. And so they'll refuse that. Take a look at this Kentucky offense. They're concerned about Tammy. Louisville is. They're going to watch where he lines up every time. A former wide receiver, now a tight end. He is six foot six and a remarkable athlete. Second down, a yard to go after the pickup on the play to Raphael Little. Woodson gives off to Little, and Little is going to get the first down for the Wildcats. So they respond initially, bring it out to the 32. Alex Brown was there. Patu Turi Turi, Rich Brooks calls his best offensive lineman right away. Michael Aitchison, a big guy at left guard. Matt McCutcheon, the veteran center. Trey Williams at right guard. Hayden Lane, a big guy right tackle. Tremendous pressure on this inexperienced offensive line. Two of those guys, Williams and McCutcheon, were walk-ons at one time. First down now for the Wildcats as Woodson this time will go for the gun. He's going to send in motion. His wide receiver dumps it off near side. Nice spin move that time is made by Little. He gets across the 30 to about the 34. And Montavious Stanley, the huge defensive tackle, was there. Doomerville, he led him in sacks with 10. We talked about Stanley, Okoye, and Rimsey. Rimsey, they put him in a position to make some impact in this game. Brandon Johnson, he's the communicator. He's the leader in that linebacking core. Secondary, they've had some changes back there. They get one of their starters back from two years ago in Gavin Smart. Back to throw now is Woodson. Woodson going deep. Look at the arm on this guy. Throws it far side. That could be pass interference. There's no flag on the play. Keenan Burton, the intended receiver. And that ball was easily thrown about 40 yards that time by Andre Woodson. What the official would say here is that this was incidental contact and it was not done intentionally. Let's just see. If you turn your shoulder and look for the football as the defender did, Antoine Sharp, who's a transfer from Florida, you will almost never be called. Third down, eight yards to go. Arliss Beach now is coming at running back for Kentucky. Woodson now changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Three wide offs on this particular play. Looks like they're going to blitz him. There's a flag. Louisville may have been offside. Woodson going deep right back to the same area. And the catch is made. Great catch is made by Keenan Burton. He goes up in the air. He's got it. Let's see what the penalty flag is all about. He has it at the 32 of the Cardinals. Woodson displaying that un uncanny accuracy. I told you the ball would loop off his hand. Here's the call. Offsides on the defense. He used a snap, cake, snap count to bait the Louisville defense. They jumped in the neutral zone. He had a free shot, and he took it. Keenan Burton, he missed all the two games last year with a broken wrist. He's back big time today for Kentucky. That was a 34-yard completion to the 32. And here's Woodson again, changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Kentucky down 7-0. The option, Woodson, big 6'5", 230-pounder, gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. Chad Ripsey over there. We were talking about the secondary of the Cardinals. And this is the secondary that they are very high on. The two Sharp brothers, they are so close to each other. Talk football all their lives. Gay is the only starter back from a year ago. And this uh, Gavin Smart, he was hurt a lot last year. Played only six games with a shoulder problem. There is one of the Sharps. Second down, 10 yards to go. And uh, Kentucky's going to call a timeout. There was some confusion. Glenn Holt was looking to the near sideline, looking at the coaches. They said, let's call a timeout, and they did. So it was 6.05 to go in a very interesting beginning here in Lexington. Louisville with the early lead, 7 to nothing.
ESPN's College Football Sunday, brought to you by State Farm. It's no accident that State Farm insures more cars than anyone else. And new Beck's Premier Light. Life beckons. And so Kentucky trying to answer the opening drive of Louisville. Six plays thus far. They've negotiated 48 yards. They have a second down, 10 after they call their first time out. Keenan Burton is in at a wide receiver along with Glenn Holt. Three split to the near side. Woodson from the gap. Got a double. A little wide receiver screen inside the 30 to the 25 to the 20. In that time, Abe Brown coming up to make the tackle. That's a 13-yard pickup as Little catching the ball. A guy out of Anderson, South Carolina. He was a prep All-American. He's explosive, and he takes good care of the football. You can see that. He put it away. What do we see out of the Joker Phillips offense? The new boy calling the plays. A nice little jailbreak screen with the lineman out there. McCutcheon getting a good hit. Little picks up the first down on inside the 20-yard line. Louisville again looking like they're going to blitz, and Woodson backs up. Woodson showing very good poise on this drive. He's going to throw, quick hitch, far side, complete inside the 15-yard line. That is Scott Mitchell, the senior out of League City, Texas. The guy who had a big game in the finale against Tennessee last season. I tell you, Joker Phillips was on my staff here at Kentucky. He's all oh man. He's highly respected. You ask these players, what's it like playing for Coach Phillips on offense? They say, it's fun. He's hard on us, but he understands, and he makes it fun to come to practice. And they've opened up this offense with him. Second down and five now for the Cats. Four wideouts, three to the near side of the field. And again, Louisville may be offside. Woodson, quick hits, completes it, and they're going to blow the play dead. That was Tammy making the catch. But I tell you what, they're doing a good job anticipating the blitz. They've caught the Cardinals offside a couple of times. That was Rimsey, the defensive end, I believe, who came across. The Woodson showing poise, the guy who has not let the blitz thus far affect his rhythm. I think what's happening is that Louisville is reluctant to blitz him. Offside. When you blitz the guy, player was out of for the quarter. There's the call. Five yards, results in the first down. Well, this guy was impressive to talk to. He was raised by his mama. She was in the military. They were all over the world. And his dad, we understand, coming down from Chicago and has come down to see him play today. Woodson gets to the line of scrimmage quickly. And he gets up to Arliss Beach, who's a big physical runner at Beach. Another out of Iceland, Kentucky gets close to the five. Excuse me, Gary. Another feature of the Phillips offense. A quick break from the huddle, rush to the line of scrimmage, the ball was snapped, Louisville was not ready, they were not down and set. Really bright call down here inside the 10 from Joker Phillips. So they're going to have a second down now at the six-yard line. Beach is still in the running back for Kentucky. Woodson tried to answer that initial drive up, hand off the Beach, fighting for the goal line, dives, and he is in, touchdown Kentucky. They've seen their Wildcats respond after C. Louisville marks the ball in on the first series. Taylor quickly to attempt the point after out of the hole of Tammy. And he has tied this game up. So Rich Brooks, the guy who has battled hard to get respectability back, has to be happy the way his Wildcats have responded here with their first drive. Well, these two quarterbacks have got it done. They're combined 10 of 11 for 110 yards. Woodson, 5 of 6. Drum earlier, 5 of 5. Could we have another upset today? Look what's happened this weekend. TCU upsetting Oklahoma. Auburn, Georgia Tech defeating Auburn. And I know Bill Curry, an alumnus well, of that. That's no upset. <laughs> Do you think that was an upset? <laughs> and 
Now, a great Meyer. win for Chan Gailey in the Georgia oh, Tech man. program. How about Urban Meyer and Charlie Weiss? What a job they had their teams do in their debut. Mass day kicking off. It's going to be Broderick Clark. Clark brings it out to the 20, gets a little angle to the 22, and down he goes. This place is alive. It's electric here at Commonwealth Stadium. David Hamilton to make the stop that time. And they're going to mark the ball now at the 24. So Bobby Petrino will come back in with a guy who was 5 of 5. Moved the ball 76 yards in 14 plays and scored the touchdown on a one-yard sneak. These two quarterbacks are mid-season form right now. They are, and it's hard to believe they are as young as they are. Both of them, Woodson included. From the 23 now, Brom will get this going. Three wideouts. We're tied at 7. 4-0-1 left to go in the first quarter. In motion comes Montrell Jones. Back to throw is Brom. Setting up. And there's nobody there. Nobody was there. Well, we've talked about the Brom family, and the daddy is with Dave Ryan. Oscar, how do you feel your son handle the pressure of that first drive? Well, I thought he looked pretty cool and calm on the first drive. He, uh, I mean, this is a great atmosphere to be in, all these fans and uh, national TV. So, uh, But I thought, he, I thought he looked pretty cool in the first drive. This is the third son you've had a chance to watch play at Louisville. What's it like from your standpoint well, to face a lot of pressure? I think they all stay pretty cool and calm. I'm the one who gets real nervous during the game. But uh, it's, it's real exciting to watch them. It, uh, I'm sorry, I was watching that play there, but it's real exciting to watch it. Uh, I know he's out there having fun, and it's something he really enjoys doing. You have a chance to settle a debate for us, Oscar. Who is the best Braun quarterback in your family? Uh, they're all pretty good. <laughs> I think that's all I'll say. Uh, pretty good answer. Gary's now at Cotton and Louisville, and also still an assistant high school football coach at Trinity High, where Brian played. Hey, Dave. They tell me he says he's the best quarterback. He always plays quarterback they in that Thanksgiving Day game. All the kids say he's the best. He can still throw it. <laughs> Third down and eight now. Rom from the shotgun. Over the middle. He hits his big man coming across the middle, and that's going to be Tinch again. Boy, is this guy top over the middle. He will take a shot and does, but he picks up 12 yards and a first down. You can see why they think Tinch is going to have a big year. That's right, and we talked about quarterbacks looking for windows. Look at what happens with the linebackers. There are holes between the linebackers. The ball is thrown perfectly into the middle of the field. It's not thrown too high so that it's tipped up and intercepted, and that's what Coach Petrino means when he says Brian Brom is a good middle of the field thrower. Ken shot of Albany, Georgia last year at 36 catches. He needs only five more to have in his career 100. Here is Brom now pitching back to big Michael Bush, and Bush just thunders forward and gets across the 45 to the 46. His namesake, Reggie Bush, we asked him about him. Of course, he plays for USC, and he just marvels at Reggie. There are different kinds of runners, and there is Greg Brom. He was a wide receiver, now the director of football operations for the Cardinals. And it was so much fun to talk to he and all the family and the Turkey Bowl games. They say Oscar got hurt one time in that Turkey Bowl game, Bill, and they had to take him to the hospital. Yeah, he got hurt pretty bad, so they stopped tackling each other. I, I thought Can that you was believe probably that? a very good idea. I can't believe they were tackling. Second down now, two yards to go now for the Cardinals. This is their second series of the game. We're tied at seven. Hand off push. Look at this guy. He is an absolute breakaway truck as he brings it close to the 40-yard line and has dropped there again at 12. Bo Smith eventually running him down, the cornerback. But I agree with you, Bill. Who wants to tackle this guy? Well, Travis Lefew and his offensive line buddies are making it easy for him with the way they're blocking. Lefew out front here blocks back on the inside on the, on the rookie Braxton Kelly, who was a little slow to fill. Boy, Braxton Kelly, what an indoctrination of the true freshman out of LaGrange, Georgia. They really like him, but boy, this is a tough baptism to come in and play against this high-powered Cardinal offense. And this pass is going to be complete to Bush. Bush in the open field. He's a very good receiver. He negotiates a 32. Antoine Huffman, the cornerback, coming up to make the stop. That's the thing about Bush. He can go out and also be effective on the perimeter as well. Well, he can, he can do just about everything, but... 
Back to Brian Brom and these young quarterbacks. Patience, you didn't see him try to force it down the field. He was happy to take the swing pass, which is a difficult throw. So the play selection is all over the board. Nothing that predicts tendencies. Colby Smith has come in. You can see how balanced they are, and they were that all year long, 51 and 48% between the two all season long. That's a remarkable statistic. Here is Brom now getting off to Colby Smith. Tries to get the corner. He's got it. 25, 20, 15, 10. Stumbles inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. So they go to their backup guy, Colby Smith, out of Tallahassee. That's a 25-yard run. Bo Smith eventually caught up with him, and this guy isn't small either. He weighs 215 pounds. Well, they just got a bevy of good backs, and that time Jason Spitz, number 59, got out in front and blocked the young player, Wesley Woodyard, who's sort of a... How shall I say this? He's sort of the noise of the Kentucky defense. He keeps people in line, and he's also a good player. That time, he got knocked down, and Smith was able to get the corner. They've got a timeout call now by Kentucky. They want to catch their breath a little bit. They're having a tough time figuring out this multifaceted attack by the Louisville Cardinals at the 116 mark. I mean, you can see why this team last year, Bill, averaged almost 50 points a game. I mean, they come at you from every direction. They've got so many things they do well. They average 49.7 points, 500 yards a game. And you can see... They have the highest efficiency quarterback, LaFleur's. He just absolutely, as a southpaw, directed an explosive attack. He did. That's Eric Sheldon. And they had Gates, also a running back. They had uh, so many good players. J.R. Russell, who led the conference in receiving the 73. There's the numbers we were talking about. Double tight ends now as we come back. First and goal at the eight-yard line for Louisville. Brom gives off. Colby Smith pounds it inside the five for about the four. Ray Melch looks there to make the tackle. Melch is a senior out of Texas. There to make the stop. It'll be second and goal. Just to add an exclamation point to what you were just talking about, last year this team averaged 7.2 yards every time they snapped the ball here. Try to imagine. Yards per pass, 9.6. Eight play drive thus far. We are approaching 30 seconds to go in this first quarter. Brom, play action, on a roll, looking to the end zone. He's going to take off, tucks it under his arm, and he's going to be grounded at the two. Coming up was Carl Booker. That was a nice play by Booker. Joe Schuler, also the middle linebacker. So they come to another third and goal, the second one of this quarter. Now, last year they also scored 89% of the time when they were in the red zone or inside the 20-yard line. Kentucky was able to stop them, one of the few teams that was able to stop them down close to the goal line and they desperately need to do just that every time they can stop this team it's a big win for them this and has been something special hasn't it the first 15 minutes well i mean i'm not sure when i've seen this many completed passes by two freshman quarter well two rookie quarterbacks they're both sophomores just learning to play this game we're tied at seven it has been intense both teams moving the ball Burton with a great catch, and the Wildcats trying to make a goal line stand when we return. What a setting. Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington on the campus of the University of Kentucky. This is our first of many on ESPN Classic. Thus far, we have a very good game underway. We come back, start of the second quarter. It's going to be third and goal at the two for Louisville. The snap comes to Brom. He's going to try to take it in, and he hits the corner for the touchdown. That's his second rushing touchdown of the day. When I saw Louisville play offense a year ago, I saw a game in which they scored 70 points. I thought at the time this may be the best offense I've seen in a decade, and they've done nothing to change that impression today with yet another quarterback. And uh, Papa, Oscar, very pleased to see his son score his second touchdown. Carmody now to add the point after out of the hole of Harry Douglas. So thus far, nobody's been able to stop anybody. We've had three series, and we have had three touchdowns in this game. And Brom has two of those touchdowns. The sophomore making, I would say, a pretty impressive debut as a starter. I'd say, watch Michael Bush leading him a nice shot there to get Abdullah. Didn't knock him down, but he spun him so that 
Muhammad Abdullah, number 42 for Kentucky, could not get his head across and make the hit. Brom roared that shoulder and drove it into the end zone. That's something that coaches don't like to see, the quarterback lowering that shoulder, but Brom is a football player in addition to being a QB. I don't think people realize how big he is, Bill. He's 6'4", 224 pounds, and we talked about he loves a big stage. You know, some people have suggested that maybe it's too much pressure. He's got his brothers, he's got his dad, he's a legendary high school player. Not this guy. Wait he minute. thrives. Wait, 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 look at does he look like Brett Farr? <laughs> I mean he looks he's playing like Brett. Now that looked like Brett Farr, that last play. The only difference in him, he didn't throw two interceptions in the first two series like Brett does. I'm sure he wouldn't want to do that. But you know, he got his hair a little mussed up there and he ran and knocked it in the end zone. I couldn't help but think about that. Well they were that saying that he got it. I'm sorry, Bill, they were saying that he had changed his hair to platinum, but it doesn't look that platinum to me. He was kidding me. He says it's growing out a little bit. He said, I got too much static for my teammates. He also looked like he was not happy that you brought it up and he said <laughs> This is what you get, Mr. Bender. <laughs> Here we go now as the Wildcats are their second offensive opportunity. Keenan Burton's going to bring it out to the 20. And he is uh, going to be dropped just short of the 25-yard line. The Wildcats will set it up. Tonight on ESPN2, Frank Beamer's Hokies, the defending ACC champions, look to avenge last season's only in conference loss. They tangle the Wolf back up North Carolina State, and Jay Davis in North Carolina State won nothing more than to deal with serious early season blows of the national title hopes of Marcus Vick and Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech, North Carolina State is also available in high definition on ESPN2 HD. Call your cable operator or satellite provider today. So now Kentucky will start from the 24 from the gun as Andre Woodson. Woodson's going to be sacked. He waited too long. You start patting the ball back there and looking around, and that takes too much time to get rid of it. On the other hand, on the other hand, he did not try to force it in there. He didn't have it. He put the ball away. He secured it. One of the emphasis in his training was just this kind of thing, and this looks like an ugly play, but what happened is you see him secure the ball. He, he riveted that ball against his chest so that it didn't get knocked out. Last year when he was sacked, the ball came out. Humerville, who led him in sacks last year, got a half of that along with Winston. The loss is going to bring up a second down and 17 from the 16-yard line. Little is in as the running back. What's it? Near side. Keenan Burton goes up. He got it. Remarkable catch. That was a jump ball, and Burton came down with it. Gavin Smart was defending. That is a big league catch. A gain of 28 yards on the play. That is a big league catch, but here's a rookie quarterback that just got drilled in the side of the head. Look at this throw. A perfect spiral. Gave his man a chance to catch the football. Counted on him to come down with it. Gavin Smart beat on the play. And Woodson has the first down for his Wildcats at the 45-yard line. Three wideouts on this particular play. The lead back is going to be Raphael Little. They're going to give it instead to Little. And Little now will bring it across the 45 to the 46. They had both Beach and Little in the backfield that time. We'll take another look at this throw and catch. The way the ball spins and the accuracy of the passer is so critical in a throw like this. He didn't just throw it up for grabs. That ball was zipped in there just perfectly over the corner shoulder. And Burton, the guy who they missed so much, he actually broken his wrist before the Louisville game last year. Tried to play with it, not knowing it was broken at the time. And played only two games. Are they glad to have him back? Second down now, virtually 10 yards to go. Woodson is back. People in his face, he's in trouble, and he'll go down back at the 35. He just went down like a tall timber on that one because Wimsey was there again. Montavious Stanley was there. It'll be a loss of even 11 on the play. We haven't talked about Kentucky's offensive line. They've been so good so far, but they are inexperienced, and right now they're getting whipped in pass protection. You've got to hold them out at least three and a half seconds. That time, the previous sack, he did have time. This time, he did not. That was the a major concern, concern like Bill, with that, that offensive line. That's the major concern. Now you've got third and 15. Mitchell is in, Holt is in, Tommy Cook, who's the dynamic leader of this football team. Number 17 is in the slot. Third down, 16 yards to go. Woodson 
dumps it over the middle. The catch is made by Beach, and Beach, the big physical running back, able to negotiate the 50. The ball as he fights forward to about the 45, and a late flag is coming in. What an effort that time by Beach. He would not give up, and that's going to be a 16-yard play, and maybe more tacked on at the end. Okay, you ask the question, why would you throw that on third and 15? The answer is because that's what you've got. The defense gave them the check down to the back, and that's what the quarterback wisely took. Let's see what the call is. After the play, personal foul, number 72 offense. Oh, the play results in their first down after the 15-yard penalty. Kentucky's ball, first down. Now that is Fatu Turi Turi, who is a transfer from Los Angeles Harbor College and playing his first game for Kentucky. And what was it that uh, Brooks said that he felt that... Um, he might be their best offensive lineman. Yeah, he feels like right already he's the best offensive lineman. The linemen are down there hustling, trying to get in on the action. Actually, Louisville could have been called right there. Montavious Stanley coming in late, but apparently there was a Kentucky lineman that took a late hit. Mayor Davis comes in now as uh, Kentucky. At the 11.45 mark, there's a stoppage of the clock. It's 14-7. The Cardinals lead the Cats in the battle for the Governor's Cup. Well, I'm sure some parents will see their kids. They're paying their tuition, books, and everything else, and wondering, what have I done? These kids are having fun, aren't they? Good, good. Don't worry, they'll, they'll go up. <laughs> As they hand off the beach as we come back in. What had happened is uh, Kentucky picked up the first down, the penalty, then moved the ball back to the 40-yard line, and then subsequent play brings it to the 41. As you see, rushing-wise, not a lot going for Rich Brooks, but the pass done pretty effective thus far. As uh, this Kentucky team very concerned. They have two walk-ons playing in that offensive line. They're now on scholarship. They have a junior college player in this first game. It's a big adjustment. It is. It's tough. Second down and nine now for the Cats. Tanny now in a tight end, and the far side, the ball was tracked. There will not be a catch. Coming back was Glenn Holt, Jr. Tried to come up with a William Gay defending on the play. Well, okay, there's, there's, a yeah, there's Joker Phillips right there. You've got to take your hat off the job he's done. He scripted the first 15 plays. He now knows what he wants. They will have to get something going in the running game. He's a great believer in the run game, even though he's been a receivers coach most of his career. We'll talk more about him. I was really impressed with him. He's a special man. Oh, he is. He said his granddad named him Joker. His real name is Joe or Joey. <laughs> I guess granddads can do that. There's Woodson back to throw on a third down, and that's behind Tommy Holt. They would have had a first down. Tommy Cook, I should say. They would have had a first down, but it was thrown behind him, and we're going to have a punt for the first time in this game. First two throws that were not really good throws on those last two by Woodson. Let's go down to Dave Ryan. Dave? Gary Kim, Tim Maste, the true freshman, will be his first career punt here at Kentucky. Now, we watched him in the pregame warm-up. He was working specifically with a special teams coach on trying to turn the ball over, get some spirals, and guys, he shanked about eight in a row. Rich Brooks says it's the best leg he's ever seen, bar none, all of the NFL experience. That says a lot. We'll see how he does with his first ever kick. Yeah, you're right, Dave. He's saying he's got an NFL-type leg. This guy's already kicked off, so he's gotten his baptism, but as you mentioned, his first punt, they almost got that. Montrell Jones coming up, makes a fair catch at the 31-yard line. So Mass Day winning the punting job, the kickoff job as a true freshman. 25-yard punt, and Brian Brom thus far with two touchdowns rushing, and his debut has been very successful. A battle in the Bluegrass State, the battle for the Governor's Cup. With Bill Curry and Dave Ryan, I'm Gary Bender. Thus far, we've had some offensive explosions. It's 14-7. Louisville has scored on their first two possessions and now inherit the football at the 33-yard line after a 25-yard punt by the freshman Nasty. Brian Brom has scored two touchdowns, both rushing, and he has been scintillated. Roderick Clark will come in motion now for the Cardinals. Get the push, and a big 250-pounder goes forward, and let's go to the studio, and here's Reese Davis.
Okay, Gary, Syracuse and West Virginia. Greg Robinson making his head coaching debut with the Orange. Perry Patterson, Syracuse quarterback. Oops, pick Wicks. Eric Wicks with the pick and the touch in West Virginia in the fourth quarter on the road, up by three on Robinson's troop. Reese, thank you. Of course, Greg Robinson and Dick Tomey were the co-defensive coordinators of the University of Texas last year. Tomey going west for a head coaching job, and now Robinson at Syracuse. Second down and six. They're going to try to get this guy just wearing down Kentucky as Bush just lowers his head and gets to the 49-yard line. He is absolutely a load. Braxton Kelly, that true freshman we're talking about, was punished on that play. Woodward also over there. He's from LaGrange, Georgia. You can see the rushing yardage, and that's not surprising. Bill, I think the interesting thing, everybody thinks of Louisville as being a passing team, but they are a power football team. 51% of the nine-game takeoff that Kentucky did were running plays, and they just grind at you and pound you down. So the perception is really interesting about this team. They do throw it effectively, but they'll come right at you, and we're seeing that today. First down at the 49, Brahma, a nice play action. Now, oh, as he gets pounded. That's the first pressure they put on, and he goes down. That was a big hit by Trey Melch and B.J. Parsons. I mean, they met at the quarterback, and that's one of the big shots of the day. They did, and this is exactly what Kentucky must have to stay in this football game. They, they've been able to get people to him. Melch and Parsons team up that time. Last year when we saw Brown, he got drilled on a blindside hit that he never saw coming. The ball came out. He instantly flipped Gary and recovered the fumble. He is such a football player. That time, he was able to protect the ball. And that, that's important. It's important to see how he plays after getting hit. Second down now. Loss of eight on the play. Second down and 18 yards to go. Brown from the gun this time. He comes out throwing. Looks like he's going to respond all right. He completes the ball back to the original line of scrimmage as over the middle able to get some of that loss back as the catch is made by Douglas. Harry Douglas coming up with the catch. He's considered to be their fastest wide receiver. He's also the holder and a guy who is a sophomore out of Jonesville, Georgia. Sooner or later, this Kentucky defense has got to get a stop. Here's third and nine. They're getting a lot of encouragement. There's Douglas split out now. Third down, as you mentioned, nine yards to go. Four wide outs. Brown changing the play. Brown is back. Pressure up the middle. Steps up. He's in trouble. Down he goes. And Kentucky now is finding a way. Mohamed Abdullah on a safety blitz making the play. Mike Archer talked to us yesterday. He said we're going to have to be very careful and choose our spots, but we're going to have to get after Braun from time to time. Sideline warning on Kentucky. They're first. Now Kentucky's excited. They've made two very good defensive plays, but they are warned to back up. i got to tell you, that's what you want as a coach. You want them warning your players to get back. You don't want them sitting back over there on the bench. You want them up there yelling at their teammates. That's a good point. Rich Brooks will take all those sideline warnings if they can get him. Todd Flannery to punt away. Back deep as Keenan Burton comes up, lets it hit. It's going to take a Kentucky bounce up to the 25. And this Wildcat defense has responded in this last series. A 30-yard punt. All of a sudden, Brian Brom is finding he's got some pressure. Keeneland Racetrack. I understand that Sea Biscuits, remember the movie that was so popular a couple of years ago? I a lot sure of it was do. filmed right there. It's maybe the most beautiful racetrack in America, according to the horse people. You can see right now, Brahm, eight of nine. He's taken a couple of shots, a couple of sacks on that last series. Woodson also had some pressure in his face, but completing 70% of his passes as we pick it up again from the 26-yard line, and Beach is going to be dropped. Good reaction that time by the Cardinals. They fire through. That'll be a loss of two on the play. Move the ball inside to the 24. This is a misread by Woodson. He's supposed to read the outside man. If the outside man comes inside, he pulls the ball and runs outside the contain, which would have been a good game. He handed the ball off, which was incorrect, and it cost him two yards. A rookie mistake. Going to bring up now a second down. 12 yards to go for the Wildcats. Here. 
made a defensive stand, now trying to get something going offensively. Tammy, the tight end, goes in motion. And Woodson has a ball knocked loose. Louisville's got it. The ball was jarred loose. The Cardinals come up with it. They're going to have a ball for 16. Doomerville, the guy who last year led him in sacks, was there. And Woodson getting a lot of heat. That time could not hang on to the football. Doomerville has excellent speed, strength, and acceleration. He comes off that corner, gets his shoulder pad up underneath Hayden Lane's shoulders and just drives him straight to the quarterback with the arm under. Woodson never had a chance, and it is that kind of fundamental he had hoped to avoid. That fundamental error of putting the ball on the ground when he's hit. Doomerville is out of Miami. He's not a very big guy, six foot. He doesn't measure up size-wise, but they say he has arms like he's a six-foot-six six guy, and he just made a big play there. The turnover sets it up at the 17 of Kentucky. Rahm is going to get it now to Bush. Bush, one verse forward to the 11-yard line. He'll be stopped there. There you recall that we said at the top that Louisville could probably overcome a couple of turnovers. Kentucky will not. Kentucky cannot afford what just happened. Now they're going to have to find a way to get a stop here or take the ball away to preserve their right to stay in this football game. Now their defense responded on the last series. Can they do it again? They're going to mark the ball at the 12-yard line. It's going to bring up second down and four yards to go. Power eye this time. Two receivers to the top of the field. Tom to Bush. Bush to the five. Touchdown, Michael Bush. And Louisville has bumped it up to a 20-7 lead. An 11-yard ramble. That's too easy. Just a minute ago, we had a fired-up Kentucky defense. When you run on the field after a turnover, that's one of the signal moments in the defense's maturity. You've got to get stopped. You've got to at least play hard. They just got knocked off the ball. Now they act like they're demoralized. That's what you can't let happen. Bush can't do that to you. I mean, he's their workhorse now as he's thunders forward from the 11 yards. Arthur Carmody adds a point after him. It's 21-7. As this is power football. And as Bill put it, it was really too easy. He went in on his feet as he thunders in. And it's 21-7 in favor of the Cards as the Cardinals now trying to establish control. The 12th ranked Louisville Cardinals playing like a team that should be ranked in the top 20 at the start of the year. They now lead a 21-7. Carmody to kick off the left footer for the Cardinals. He boots this one. And it's going to be Burton coming up. And Burton's going to gather it in at the 10 to the 15 to the 20, 25. And it's going to move the pile forward to the 27-yard line. Burton stopped by John Russell, a backup safety. So now Woodson, who turned it over the last time, has to regather and hopefully get this Wildcat team going again. Well, Coach Phillips has such a relationship and a bond with his men. These are the moments that test those relationships, and this is when a team must respond. He comes out of Ratcliffe, Kentucky. He was an outstanding basketball player. In fact, his high school team was rated every year in basketball, but now the quarterback for the Wildcats. They're going to dump it quickly. A little wide receiver screen to Little. Little coming out of the backfield. Brings it up now to the 38-yard line, and that's very close to a first down, and it will be a first down. That's a good way to get back into this. It's a very good way. What you do is you take away the aggressiveness of the defense. If they're blitzing and they're coming off the corner and they're getting a good pass rush, then you go to your slip screens and your little jail breaks like that. That's called jail break because of the linemen that come lumbering out there. And it looks like a herd of turtles, but they always get it in somebody's way. And a nice run right there by Little. And so they're going to have the first down. It'll be at the 38-yard line. Kentucky down 21-7 inside seven minutes to go here in the second quarter of play. And to send a little in motion, and Woodson's going to be gathered and dropped. Man, what pressure by Abe Brown. He was there almost as quickly as Woodson straightened up. The junior out of Sarasota, Florida. He just makes plays. That's a protection error. 
He came absolutely clean. Brown, good at quickness and speed. There's no blocker. Woodson needs to recognize that. Brown moved over from his outside linebacker spot to the weak side, came off the corner. Woodson had too many rushes. He needs to see that and adjust to it. This is the only way he can learn. Brown is uh, on the Butkus list at the start of the season, the junior, and uh, they are very excited about his play, and there's a reason why. Second down now, 16 yards to go. Looks at a little screen, and he's able to get a little, little fighting forward, and he's got to get close to the original line of scrimmage, and we're going to step away. Let's go to the studio, and here's Reese Davis. Okay, Gary, again, checking on Syracuse and West Virginia. Perry Patterson has already thrown an interception that was returned for a touchdown. Now sacked in the end zone. Ernest Hunter of the Mountaineers getting it done. West Virginia on top of Syracuse, 12-7 in the fourth. Okay, Rich Rodriguez is quite a coach, did he? He is. He started all this reading stuff from the sack there. Third down now, 11 yards to go. Woodson needs an 11-yard play to keep this going. That pressure is going to go down again, and right now he is taking some punishment. Doomerville came up with it. Is this going to be a fumble recovery? Doomerville's taking it in, as evidently they're going to reward him with a touchdown. I wasn't sure for a moment. He did come up with it, and Doomerville, who has been a real thorn in Kentucky's side, took that one 34 yards for the touchdown. Now, they're discussing this play. There's a flag. I wondered about this when he took off, but let's see. Well, regardless of the official's call, this is exactly what Andre Woodson said to us. He wanted two or four. Personal foul, number five on the run. The touchdown is good. So the touchdown stands. It's Antoine Sharp who was guilty of the personal foul, and Doomerville is having a major league day here today. He has really been in Woodson's face. Harmony to add the point after it's 27-7 now. And now Rich Brooks wants an explanation. We're going to go back and replay this. Of course, we have replay now in the SEC. And it will be the official from up above. The coaches themselves cannot challenge it. You're exactly right, Gary. We can't see inside that booth because of the obvious sun reflection, but there are officials in there that are studying the play, and unless there's some clear cause to study the play, they don't stop it. All right, let's watch this. See, see, I, I initially thought he was down, but it's hard to tell from that vantage point. My first instinct told me that he was down with the ball. Let's see. Nope. Well, no, Dumerville is down with the ball. <laughs> See, his, he's all over the ground. He's got possession of the ball. It looks like Dumerville came up with the football, but he's laying flat on the ground with his knees and body. Gets up, turns and runs, which is exactly what I would have coached him to do. Yeah. But he should not get a touchdown here. That's right. It would be a fumble, but as you mentioned, you can get up and run once you're down. So that's what the review is all about. And we uh, showed you a moment ago the officials looking at it. <laughs> you can't see much there. It's a weird-looking scene, but trust me, there's some people back there looking into a little screen. It's like a psychedelic uh, picture of some type, right? Anyway, that's what the delay is right now. So it may not be a 27-7 game, but it would be the Cardinals football. Back to the discussion with Andre Woodson, the very thing that he brought up to us, and I'm, I'm saying this, I'm being repetitive here, he said, I've just got to stop losing the football in the pocket. Here's the call. And here's the explanation. We understand it will be the Cardinals' ball, but not the touchdown. After reviewing the play, there is indisputable video evidence that the Louisville player's knee was on the ground after taking the ball. It is Louisville's ball, first and ten at the 33. The dead ball penalty on number five will be assessed 15 yards from the 33-yard line. Louisville's ball, first down. So that really changes things. Not only 
Did they uh, not get the touchdown, but the 15-yarder against Antoine Sharp, the yeah. strong safety, and it gives Kentucky a chance to make a stand here defensively. Well, Gary, I was against replay. I thought it was too unwieldy, and there'd be too much problem, but this is the reason that replay exists, and I am now in favor of it, not because of this call, but because I've seen several calls in the first week of football in college in which injustices were corrected, and that's what happened here. Well, the Big Ten started it all, and uh, the WAC is one of the few conferences that's not going to have it for this guy. Look what he's done thus far. Four sacks just for that recovery a moment ago. He had a touchdown taken away, but he's done everything right. If my name were Elvis, he didn't go, I th I'd, I'd be cool, too. That guy's a good player. I like watching him rush the pass. <laughs> it's going to be first down now. They mark it at the 48-yard line. Ron gives to Bush. Bush, look at the niftiness. Got quick feet for that big body. And he's inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. He is impressive. Woodyard over there to make the stop. Let's go down now. Sideline to Dave Ryan. Well, obviously, Gary, a very difficult time for the hurricane victims. And we're joined by Lamar Mills' father, Benny, from Slidell, Louisiana, just outside Lake Pontchartrain, where the levees broke. What is life like back home for your family? Well, right now, uh, it's, uh, it's pretty bad back down there. Um, the water is everywhere, especially in the city. I'm on the North Shore, and um, we got three feet of water in our area also. What is the status with your home? Well, the, the house is, uh, well, I, it flooded, and uh, also um, there was a lot of down trees in, in my area. Um, well, in fact, one of the uh, trees fell across uh, the front of my house. How are you managing now, sir? What are you doing for shelter and your job in the future? The Red Cross um, has provided uh, for us to have uh, you know, a hotel for a couple of weeks, so uh, thank God for that. And um, as far as uh, my job, um, on the internet, um, we will be out, the plant will be closed for at least about three weeks, so um, we'll hear something, I guess, later about what the future will be. We wish you and your wife and the whole family the best of luck in recovery. Thank you. Dave, good interview. You know, that's quite a family, this Mills family. Both of their parents uh, are doctors. His uh, son is in the Patterson School of Business, the first U.K. athlete ever. And the victims of Hurricane Katrina need your help. The American Red Cross provides disaster victims with food, shelter, clothing, counseling, and more. It has just been an unbelievable week to watch all of that, the courage. But you know something? This is a great country, and they're going to recover. Yes, and we're all going to help them with our prayers and our gifts and everything else we can do. There's a busted play, and Brom turns it into a first down. He's going to go to the 14-yard line. He turned one way. The flow was going the other way. He tucked the ball under his arm and went 15 yards. Bo Smith and Marcus McClinton eventually made the tackle. Gary did the same thing a year ago, meaning he turned the wrong way. Quarterbacks do make mistakes. So what if you're a football player and you turn the wrong way? You turn it into a first down run. The poise of this guy, it just doesn't figure. Here he is, a sophomore, playing like he's a senior, that he's been around this big league atmosphere forever. Gary Barnage and Gia Camoni are now the tight ends. First down just inside the 15-yard line. 21-7 Louisville. Has Brown going to dump it. He completes it to Colby Smith inside the five. Fights to the two. That'll be a first and goal. Colby Smith alternating with Bush. 12-yard pickup. Well, what's coming up at halftime? Let's find out. Here's Reese Davis. All right, Gary, Mark May alongside. We have a Big East battle going on right now. I'll let you know how that turns out. Virginia Tech and North Carolina State tonight. The latest on Jerry Rice's future. And I'll let you know if North Carolina State can get to 10 sacks as they had against the Virginia Tech quarterbacks last year. Coming up at halftime. You know what? I love Brian Randall. I got a feeling Vic's going to be harder for them to catch. He's a little quicker. Yeah, a little justice match. It'll be fun to watch. Marcus Vick replacing the... Uh, the quarterback you mentioned, who was outstanding last year in the ACC, and the, the bloodlines running with the Brom family, and now the Vic family down in Virginia Tech. Not much going on this particular thrust up the middle by Smith. It's going to bring up second and goal, just outside the two. Wondering how Mark May is feeling right now after watching that Notre Dame-Pittsburgh game. Not good. Not good. Mark is, uh, is admittedly not feeling good about that. Boy, that was impressive by Charlie Weiss and the Fighting Irish. 
Second and goal now, just outside the two. Brown to Smith, trying to go wide, breaks a tackle, and he's going to be run out just short of the goal line at about the half-yard line. Couldn't talked quite about, get in. Talked about the Kentucky's defense's reaction the last time there was a big turnover, and they allowed Louisville to just run in the end zone. This time they're fighting, scratching. Bo Smith has made a couple of big hits. One really fine tackle on a little hitch pass. This time he bounces Smith out of bounds. They just got to keep scratching and fighting. So they have a third and goal. It's the third time in this game that Louisville has had a third and goal. This is a short one. Less than a yard. Barney's the tight end. Will go in motion. Come set. Get Smith. Smith fighting. He didn't get in. It's fourth down. Boy, this could be a major psychological whip if Kentucky makes them settle for the field goal. Will they kick the field goal? No. Muhammad Abdullah was there. No, they're not going to kick the field goal. They're going to. What they? These two. These two people went to high school together. These, these two teams. They're not going to kick the field goal inside the one yard line. Betrino, All right. That's not his way. He's, I'm going to come out there and knock it in the end zone. But he may have a little trickery too. Look at him. He wants a touchdown. He wants to put him away. They're going to have to maybe use a timeout. There's a little confusion right now as Brom is going over to the official. There's four seconds on the play clock, and they will use a timeout. Big play in this football game. Well, it's a huge play for Kentucky. 21-7 Louisville. They're trying to build on their lead. We come back. It'll be fourth and goal. So, an important stage of this football game, as Bill Carey put it, Kentucky desperately needing to make a stand here on fourth and goal just inside the one. You can see what they have done under Petrino. They just absolutely keep the scoreboard busy, don't they? And today they are now trying to get their fourth touchdown of the day. What do you do here if you're Louisville? If you're Petrino and you're Louisville, I think you knock the ball in the end zone. If you're Kentucky, you get underneath those pads and you knock them back and get the ball to your offense on the one-yard line. This is what it's all about down here. You can see the total yards by the cards. They have three tight ends in on the set. Brahm, who scored twice himself running the ball in, gives to Bush, and he hammers it in. So the power football after the timeout, and the Cardinals have bumped it up to 27-7. to I tell you, the way Bush hits in there, he can just fall forward and get a yard. Well, he didn't fall. The, the thing about him is if a guy that is as tall as he is, if he runs up right, he's just an easy target. He doesn't do that. He gets his pads down. That's what we just saw. Carmody now to add the point after out of the hold of Douglas. And the left-footed kick is going to split the uprights, and it's a 28-7 count. Michael Bush having a big day. No surprise. You expected that. He's the new workhorse at running back. When he hits it up in the line, those pads are down. When he's in the open field, he has agility. He's upright. When he realizes he's going to take a hit, look at those shoulders get down. Out of Mail High School in Louisville. And he is averaging 6.1, and a guy who last year they would come in late with him. They would soften him up with a guy like Eric Shelton, who was uh, just put on the injured reserve list uh, yesterday by the Carolina Panthers. But now he's got to be the guy. He'll carry maybe 25 times a game, and that's a little different responsibility for him. Well, that's a much different responsibility, and it requires more endurance. It requires more attention to detail and discipline, but he has certainly demonstrated thus far that he's up to the task. He was Mr. Football of Kentucky. He was a quarterback his senior year. He and Brom got into the, what many people feel is the greatest high school championship game of all time. He and Brom went after each other. Brom from Trinity, Bush from Mayo High School. The game ended up being 59-56. Brom threw seven touchdown passes and Bush had six. Can you imagine? Wouldn't you love to have been there? Oh, they still talk about that game. Carmody kicking off to the near corner. It's going to be Drake Davis, his first return, and he is initially hit, and then help arrives, and he goes nowhere. Wow. George Stripling was there. 
We're talking about Bush and what he was able to do. At one time, he wanted to play quarterback, but when a guy like Brahms in there, how can you be playing that position? But look at what he did at Mayo High School. Wow. And he only played quarterback one year, and I asked him the day before yesterday, you, you really still dream about quarterback? He said, no, I got it out of my mind. <laughs> He's got a future, as does this guy. First down now, Kentucky starting inside the 15. Woodson gives up, and Arliss Beach is grounded. All of a sudden, this Louisville football team is starting to slowly take control of this game. They lead it 28-7, 50 seconds to go in the first half. With Bill Curry and Dave Ryan, I'm Gary Bender, and we're going to remind you that this is the game of the week on ESPN Classic, and we hope that you will be joining us as we'll have a package throughout the year. Next week, it'll be Army at Boston College. Second down, 11. Hand off to Beach. Nowhere. I tell you right now, they are just shutting down the Wildcats. Well, the, the, the line of scrimmage, the defensive line of scrimmage, Brandon Johnson, number 97, the big outside linebacker, the brilliant student who turned down a scholarship to MIT. Yes, to can play you believe that? At Louisville. Yeah, I, mean, I can believe it. He loves to play. He just made a play all across the front. Dumerville, Stanley, Okoye, they have taken charge of the football game, giving the ball to their offense offense deep in Kentucky territory and now Kentucky is on the verge of a really tough situation. You mentioned Johnson turned down an opportunity to go to MIT. He also turned down an academic scholarship at Louisville and he's from Birmingham. They say he's the smartest player on defense and Brandon Johnson, they call him the communicator. He was telling us the other day he watches so much tape. He is watching tape all the time. So Kentucky needs something good to happen on a third down 10. There's only 22 seconds left in this first half and you look back at this game, it was 7-7 after one quarter, but all of a sudden the Cardinals have come storming to dominate the second quarter of play. Unfortunate for Kentucky that, that a break occurred at this point because now they run this play and don't make the first down. Wilbur's going to call timeout and try to block one and get another one. And that is exactly what they're thinking right now. Both teams have one timeout remaining. And they're not going to get much on this play. They have a minus 20 yards rushing previous to that last snap. Montavia Stanley, all 320 pounds, was there. Stanley out of Albany, Georgia. And as Bill Curry, the old coach, comes back out, and he was thinking ahead of a play. And right now they're going to have to punt the football. Kentucky started well, Bill. Look at this. We can document that statistically. And then in the second quarter, the two turnovers and, and the Cardinals just starting to show why a lot of people feel. In fact, the New York Times came out earlier and said they thought that uh, Louisville would go to the Rose Bowl to play in the BCS championship game, and they picked Michigan to be their opponent. Interesting they would do that. I, I didn't think that they could even aspire to that kind of thing until I saw them play late last year. They put up 70 points against Cincinnati, and they really weren't trying to run it up. They substituted. I mean, they, there was not an effort to throw the ball in the end zone with all those points. Now their defense is impressing me because they are the ones who took over this football game, giving the ball back to their offense on two occasions that led to directly to the two touchdowns. So instead of a one touchdown lead, they got a three touchdown. Lead. Yep. Let's switch sports for a moment. The battle for the American League wild card heats up tonight on ESPN as Alex Rodriguez, Derek Jeter, and the New York Yankees take on Eric Chavez and the Oakland A's. I mean, everybody is deadlocked. The Yankees and A's and Indians identical records. That ball almost blocked past State. A true freshman got it high in the air. It may have hit a Louisville player. The ball is being picked up and run back inside the 15-yard line. And this is a peculiar end of this first half. That is it. We have played a half. However, we may have a penalty play. Robert Haskins was the guy who came up with it. Let's see what this is all about. May have a face mask. Was that a weird play or what? Five yard incidental face mask on the defense. Five yards from the end of the run. There'll be one on time down. That's right. You cannot end a half on a defensive penalty. That's right. So this gives Louisville a chance 
worst nightmare of, for a football coach. You get the thing off, and it ends up being about a two-yard punt because there was such pressure. It's touched by a Kentucky player, picked up alertly by Louisville, coming back down the sideline. Incidental face mask, there it is. It's kind of hard to see who it was. And Brooks is going to try to ice the field goal guy, Carmody, as he wants to kind of recapture their poise a little bit. That was a peculiar play, and obviously with no time left on the clock, Again, you cannot end a half on a defensive penalty, so with no time left, Louisville can kick this field goal. And Carmody will now walk off as they try to ice him a little bit. Carmody, the sophomore, who we mentioned set an NCAA record with 77 straight PATs, already holds five school records. This guy is 5'9", only 181 pounds, but he made the all-freshman team last year, and has a very good future ahead of him. 181, that's pretty big for those kickers. <laughs> a lot of those guys that weigh 130 pounds. They Remember, though, when you legs, played though. with the Colts, Lou Michaels, how big was he when Lou, he kicked? Lou didn't weigh 181. <laughs> Lou, Lou, is a, uh, Lou is a great Kentucky player, one of the best yep. ever, and he was a fine player for us with the Baltimore Colts previously with the Steelers, and he's a very good friend of mine. Lou's a heck of a heck of a football player. Was he left-footed? Left-footed, I yep. thought he was, yeah. Yep. This will be now a 21-yard field goal attempt. So Carmody to kick out of the hold of Harry Douglas. Carmody during the season last year was 12 of 15. He gets this one up quickly. And it is no good. It's wide right. So Kentucky gets a reprieve. 28-7 is our halftime score. As the Cardinals was a huge second quarter, led by this guy, Brian Brom, who's everything is advertised. He has certainly not been a disappointment, scoring two touchdowns himself. And let's go down now to Dave Ryan with Coach Bobby Petrino. Bobby, certainly a strange ending that happened with a missed field goal. Still, your team seems to have a lot of momentum. How important is that? Well, it's good. we got our defense playing in the second quarter, playing fast and pressuring the quarterback. Offense has been pretty consistent except for the one drive. Sure would have liked to have that field goal, though. How do you feel Brian Brown has handled pressure in his first start today? I think he's done a nice job. You know, they're starting to bring some blitz at him, so he's got to make sure he understands that. Gets our protection set so we don't have any pressure. But uh, he missed a couple, but other than that, he's done all right. Thanks, Bobby. All right, all right Dave, and uh, we're going to take a break, and we're going to go to the studio, and we'll be joining Reese Davis and Mark May. All right, Gary, glad to have you along in halftime. That's an offensive ball coach right there. He's up 28-7. Petrino gets a freebie. Sure would like to have had that field goal. It was just three points. That's it. <laughs> yeah, you know, Kentucky was scrappy. I think the best news for the Cats in the first half, uh, six weeks or so away from the start of basketball practice. <laughs> uh, probably, it's, uh, it's tough because they played scrappy, just overwhelmed yes. by Louisville. Yes, they did. And it was the interior line, offensively and defensively, for Louisville. If you look at their defense, their defensive coordinator, Mike Cassidy, did a fantastic job of stopping the run, putting pressure on the quarterback of Kentucky. But here's the key. Minus 19 rushing yards for Kentucky in the first half. Louisville has 133 yards. And the reason is Michael Bush, the running back, a 250-pound running back. He's a battering ram. He's got speed and power. Plus, their offensive line returns four starters this year i think that's the key they're dominating mm -hmm. the line of scrimmage and the point of attack and bush much better condition not that he was in awful shape before but said to be in the shape of his life it showed in the first half louisville up 28 to 7 at the break when we can commonwealth stadium in lexington as the louisville cardinals leading at 28 to 7 with bill curry i'm gary bender the first quarter was tied at seven Kentucky had taken their opening drive and scored. Louisville had, and then all of a sudden, the Cardinals started to really come on. The Cardinals' defense took control. Mike Cassidy, very wisely, the defensive coordinator that's done such a good job there at Louisville, took over the game by jumping the routes of the receivers of Kentucky. We're now seeing the Louisville drive. Brian Brom putting his stamp on this team. In the early going, Andre Woodson, sharp, beautiful throw to Keenan. His man, yet Michael Bush takes over the game, knocking it in the end zone. And really, the offensive line and the defensive line of Louisville both took over the game. You see Eric, Eric Dumova there, number 58, sacking the quarterback, taking the ball away. The very worst nightmare of Andre Woodson. 
Look at this, Bill, as far as Rush is concerned. In that second quarter, Kentucky was a minus 31, and for the game, a minus 19. They cannot run the ball. Your stats after the first half brought to you by Allstate. As you can see, that's typical of Louisville, averaging six yards. What did you say all year last year? They averaged 7.2 a play. 7.2 yards every time they snapped the ball. So the stats, and we stand corrected, brought to you by State Farm Insurance. Ready to kick off now is going to be Carmody. Back deep is Greg Davis. Davis is going to take it at the three, comes up to the 10, to the 15, to the 20, and fights his way up to the 23-yard line. Let's go to Dave Ryan. Dave. All right, Gary, just spoke with Kentucky head coach Rich Brooks, who said his message to his team was simple but very clear. We have to execute the way we did in that first drive when Andre Woodson led the Wildcats to a touchdown. We have to protect him and, of course, eliminate bad penalties and no more turnovers. Now, above all, what he wants his team to do is be very aggressive in the second half. Do not play on your heels. Play on your toes. That's the message from Rich Brooks. They need some success, and Woodson in particular, because he got hammered. They had five sacks in that second quarter, Louisville did. So Woodson now trying to reestablish a little control in this game, and he's going to give off to Little, and Little not able to get much, and that's been the story as the Cardinals have shut down the running game of the Wildcats. Just remember the names Amobi Okoye, Montavia Stanley, Dumerville, Rimsey. The front people, which is where football is really, <laughs> the old adage, that's where it starts. In the trenches. Second down, 10 yards to go. Woodson this time has a trips formation to the top of the field. Just underway in this uh, battle for the Governor's Cup. Kentucky has lost five of the last six. They'd like to somehow find a way to rally to get the little and little rallies in there for a first down. He brings it out to the 35-yard line to pick up a 12. Matt Sanders, the middle linebacker from Mayo High School in Louisville there to make the stop, but that was a very impressive first up the middle. They are not huddling. They're calling Joka Phillips, the fine offensive coordinator, the signaling the plays in, and they're staying at the line of scrimmage. They're going to try to get a rhythm back into this game for Woodson. Try to get him some confidence. Trips formation, top of the field again. Single running back. They have Glenn Holt Jr. split to the near side. Now Woodson taking some time, changing the play. They have five seconds left on the play clock. Woodson scrambling around, throws and boy, a bullet. Not finding the mark. He tried to make the connection to Tommy Cook, who couldn't come up with it. There's Joker Phillips, the guy you were talking about. Yep, Joker's taking a page out of Watson Brown's playbook. They come to the line of scrimmage. This is something Watson Brown began when he was coaching at Vanderbilt about 20 years ago. They come to the line of scrimmage, force the defense to line up, and then call the play. So they're lining up. They're getting in their formation. Woodson's directing traffic. He's taking a look. And then he's getting the play and calling it. Second down 10. Boy, you saw the strength of Woodson's arm on that last pass. Even though it didn't find the mark, he zipped it up the middle. So here he is trying to get this team back offensively after they started so well in this game. They had no success in the second quarter. Woodson lost the ball, and that'll be an incomplete pass. He started to throw. He wanted to hold up, and the ball came out. Incomplete. When I was talking over the highlights just a couple of minutes ago, I talked about the fact that Coach Mike Cassidy, the defensive coordinator for Louisville, had his DBs jumping the routes of the wide receivers. That's what happens here. Woodson thinks he's got an open man at the last instant. He sees that he's not open. He can't control the football. Third down now, 10 yards to go. Kentucky in the opening series of the second half, now at the 35-yard line. And again, Woodson checking off. Three wideouts this time. Woodson back. Throws under some pressure. Wide open. Cook, Cook makes the catch. Tommy Cook inside the 20. And Cook down close to the 15-yard line. Here is the leader of this football team, a dynamic leader, Tommy Cook, the senior, out of Victoria, Texas. That's a 53-yard completion. But they were dropping eight there, rushing with three, and that's the kind of thing that should never happen or this kind of three-deep coverage. But William Gay is out of position. The free safety is also out of position. Antoine Sharp, 
which allows Cook to get loose in the secondary. Boy, Cook is really a special player on this team. They love him, a six-year senior. He was out last year with a knee injury. Big catch, 53 yards. Going to mark the ball. They're going to mark it at the 12-yard line. Boy, that may give the Wildcats some hope. Here's a handoff to Little, Little bouncing forward. And he's inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. Montavia Stanley made the tackle. We talked about Cook. We mentioned he's kind of a leader. He is a leader. He's the heartbeat of this team. He paints his face once in a while. Nobody messes with him. His dad has driven all the way from Victoria, Texas, parked an RV in an RV park, and he's going to stay here all season long. He's going to come to every practice. He's a high school coach, and he knows what he's looking for. Second down now and seven yards to go. This time they have Holtz put to the near side in the slot as Keenan Burton on the near side of the field. Arliss Beach is the running back behind Woodson. Woodson, quick drop, going in zone, and Glenn Holt Jr. lost the ball or something, or he couldn't turn to the ball as Holt tried to come up with it, and they could not. But what happened is he was anticipating the ball coming over his outside shoulder, and Woodson did not hook up with him. We'll get a good look at here. He's breaking it outside. He's gotten to the DB beat. Should be over his right shoulder. Gavin Smart is caught inside, which is exactly where Smart probably should be, but the throw was error. Third down and seven, so the ball was thrown over the long shoulder, as Coach Curry was indicating. Woodson now will go to the shotgun. Woodson in trouble. He's going to be thrown for a loss. A big loss on third down. As that was Doomerville again. Doomerville has been everywhere. And that will be for Doomerville his fifth sack of the game. Well, Hayden Lane is just not quick enough or strong enough to deal with Elvis Doomerville. Doomerville is a... Very low to the ground, very powerful man. It's his fifth sack today, and we're just early in the third quarter. And so now they will attempt the field goal. Taylor Bigley will come in. He is from Danville, Kentucky, a senior. He set a school record last year with 77 consecutive PATs. He is a left footer as well. Last year, 9 of 14, he had a 51 and 52 yarder. This is going to be a 36 yard attempt, and he got it. So Kentucky trying to climb back into this football game. 11 14 left from the third. It's now 28 10, Louisville. Elvis Coomerville is having a career here in the first game of this 2005 season, his fifth sack of the, of the game. So on the opening drive, Kentucky able to get three points out of it. 28-10 here with 11-14 to go in the third. Begley with a 37-yard field goal. Mass Day will kick off. It's going to be Broderick Clark and George Stripling back for Louisville. Very short this time. Coming up on the fly is going to be Clark. And Clark is able to bring it out. And the ball is loose. The ball is loose. Kentucky says they have it. And they do. Boy, all of a sudden now, this game could pivot around in a hurry. Big hit by number 26, Drake Davis. Ball was not given to Kentucky. It no, it isn't. I thought they were. Ball. Let's look at it again. They were all the indicating ground. that. We'll see 26 come into your picture and make the hit right there. And it was a, it was a heck of a hit. Whoa, I'd That's like to see the end of that. Let's see this. Down. Nope, the ball was out. That ball was out. They missed one. Wow, the fans didn't like too it bad for Kentucky. That really is too bad. From the 32-yard line, now the Cardinals have it. Brom throwing, and uh, that's a, at the feet. At uh, the feet of Tench, and let's go down to Dave Ryan. He's got a special guest. I do indeed, Gary. This is a 12th Governor's Cup, and Ernie Fletcher, the governor of Kentucky, is here. You're a 1974 alum of Kentucky, but I see on the lapel you've got both schools represented. Who are you rooting for today? Well, I have to say, I'm, I'm, I bleed blue. <laughs> this is, but one day I have to be politically correct. Kentucky wins no matter which team wins here, but uh, I spent a long time at the University of Kentucky, root for them, and I root for the Cardinals every other game, believe me. What does this day mean to the state of Kentucky with the big Rivalry. Well, it's a big game. It's one of our most competitive games. You get up to national attention. You get attention all across the state. You have the two major statewide universities coming together. We've got improving programs at both schools. Obviously, the Cardinals are doing very well today, and they've got a great program. Kentucky's a little younger, but they're coming along. 
But it's uh, it's about our unbridled spirit here in Kentucky, and it's a good day for the state. Beautiful weather. Turning to Hurricane Katrina, what is the state doing for relief, sir? Well, we've done a number of things. One, we have almost 380 National Guard troops down there. We've got a rescue team rescuing folks right in uh, New Orleans right as we speak. We've sent our state troopers down. We've sent some vehicle enforcement. We've also got some fish and wildlife folks down with boats to help with rescue. We're going to be taking some medical folks here. We've got hospitals ready for that. And we have some, uh, really, for some facilities to bring some of the, the refugees. Thank you so much for your time, sir. Well, thank you. It's great. Thanks. Uh, let me say thanks to ESPN being here. Great game. Glad you're here. Uh, it's a, really a great sporting event for the state. Sure is. Thank you, Dave. Jerry? Dave, thank you very much. So Louisville on a third down and nine, able to convert for a Mark made the catch, brought it out to the 49. After a near fumble a moment ago, Brown comes up throwing, and the catch is going to make just across the 50-yard line by Joshua Tinch. Now, here's some of uh, what uh, the governor was talking about, the money that they're collecting in this unbelievable natural disaster down in New Orleans and Mississippi and Alabama. I mean, it's such compelling to, things to see and the people and the courage and how everyone is rallying around. It's going to bring up now a second down, seven yards to go. 28-10. Louisville with the lead. 9.26 to go in the third. The pitch comes out of Colby Smith. And Smith able to get across the 45 to the 44-yard line. And so if you want to donate, here's the number to call. 1-800-HELP-NOW. As uh, we all know, the Hurricane Katrina and what it did in thousands of people still trying to find their loved ones, their homes. It's just absolutely incredible what's been going on. And uh, the people around the United States, they are rallying. Third down now. Almost uh, four yards to go for the Cardinals. Rom with three wide outs, top of the field, surveys the field, throws it, and uh, Clark can't get to it. Pretty good coverage that time but by Mohammed Abdullah. Mohammed, Mohammed Abdullah has two kids. One son, one daughter. They think he has a chance to be in the NFL. He's a real stabilizing force on this team, a quiet leader. He was fun to visit with. Yes, he's a delightful young man. He loves playing football. Here now is the uh, punt by Flannery. They're going to let this hit. It'll go into the end zone for the touchback. And Kentucky kind of hanging tough here. It's a 43-yard punt. The Wildcats will get it back. They have been able to post three points in the second quarter. This is the sixth largest crowd in Commonwealth Stadium history, 70,752. This is Rupp Arena where the Kentucky Wildcat basketball team under Tubby Smith, the SEC defending champions, play. Of course, uh, at one time, Adolph Rupp and Paul Bear Bryant were here at the same time. We got an interesting story to tell about that. Well, there are lots of interesting stories <laughs> about those guys. As we start now, this series from the 20-yard line. Kentucky trying to claw back into this game now. Down 28-10, 8-28 left to go in the third quarter. Woodson. And that ball was deflected. He tried to get it to Tammy. They've really shut down Tammy, the big 6-6 tight end. And Louisville said they're going to figure out where he lined up. I was going to tell the story, Bill, and you were telling me the story earlier. The year that uh, Bear Bryant won the national championship, 1950, it was the same year that Adolph Rupp also won an NCAA championship in basketball. He beat Kansas State in the uh, Final Four in uh, Minneapolis. Bear had beaten Oklahoma in the Sugar Bowl. So they had a banquet at the end of the year for both of them. And I understand that Adolph Rupp got a Cadillac and Paul Bear Bryant got a cigarette lighter. Uh, that's what the story is. We never can quite ascertain whether that's apocryphal or the real deal. <laughs> <laughs> There's a pass up the middle, incomplete. And what a penalty flag, and here it comes. It was late. Abe Brown tangled up with Raphael Little. So the story is, Bear Bryant figured this was a basketball school, and he went on to Texas A&M. He took off to Texas A&M, where they went to a little place called Junction, Texas, and had them a football camp. And uh, that's the stuff of legend, too. We talked about 
Brahms records being the stuff of legend. Of course, Coach Bryant's record, all his records are legendary, as they should be. And so now it's going to bring up a uh, first down, the penalty, giving them the first down at the 27-yard line. So Kentucky trying somehow to get back into this football game, trailing 28 to 10. Pitch to Little, Little with the corner, to the 30, 35, he's in the open field. He's going to cut it back to the 50. He's going to go to the 40, the 35, the 30, 25, and tripped up inside the 25-yard line. A remarkable effort by Little, 51 yards on the play. That was brilliant running, but it never happens unless the blocking at the point of attack has been crisp. And if you're Louisville, the worst thing you can do right now is to relax a little bit. Nice job there, again, by Fatu Turi Turi out in front, blocking on 43A Brown. Little showing that explosion almost took it the distance. This guy is an exciting player. He can dunk the basketball. He has a 42-inch vertical. And you can see how explosive he is. 51 yards on the play. First down now inside the 25. There's a little again trying to get wide this time. This time the Cardinals react. Very good defensive effort at that time. Coming up was Gavin Smart. Also Antoine Sharp coming up to make the tackle. There he is. Gavin Smart, a guy who a year ago was uh, nicked up, had a lot of shoulder problems. They're glad to have him back. Well, Coach Phillips knows this. He, he believes in the running game. He knows they get this ball in the end zone. They're right back in this football game. Second down, they lost a yard. Second and 11 on the play. Woodson this time will come out underneath center. Approaching seven minutes to go in the third. Kentucky kind of getting their legs back under it, starting to have some poise after a disastrous second quarter. Woodson is the reason as he hands off this time and bam, straight ahead. No place to go on that particular play. Stanley there just shut down that from the get-go as Little had no opportunity to run with the ball. Well, Little's, Little's exhausted, and I don't, I don't know that they have anybody that's like him that they can get in there. They put Drake Davis in, but Little needs to come off the field. But that long run just takes so much out of you. Coach Phillips recognizing that he gets Drake Davis in in his place. That's a very good point. He was exhausted. As Drake Davis, the senior, has come into the ball game now. He's their kick return man, kind of a spot running back for the Cats. Third down now, nine yards to go. Woodson, a lot of pressure in his face, able to be flushed out, stays alive, throws it into the end zone, touchdown! The catch is made! A remarkable grab by Scott Mitchell, but give Woodson credit for keeping the play going and getting the touchdown. One yard touchdown. We've got a football game. Yeah, we got two quarterbacks on this field, too. Brahms not the only good quarterback. We're watching Andre Woodson grow up before our very eyes. That's what you're seeing, folks. Scott Mitchell coming up with a catch. Begley now to attempt the point after. At the 6-0-1 mark, they're going to blow this play dead. There's a flag as the ball was snapped and the kick went through the uprights. Scott Mitchell was the guy who came on the last game of the season against Tennessee at nine catches for 111 yards. Woodson is not only a bright guy, but he's also very athletic. And rather than just pump the ball that time, he made use of those great feet of his. So they'll do it again. As uh, the point after is on the way, and he got it. And it is now 28-17, 6-0-1 to go in the third. Now Coach Cassidy, the defensive coordinator for Louisville, said he was going to get after this young quarterback. He made him pay this time with excellent agility and a nice throw to Mitchell. ESPN's College Football Sunday, brought to you by K-Swiss and IBM, helping companies innovate in an on-demand world. 
University of Kentucky campus, and they're excited here in Commonwealth Stadium because their Wildcats have come back, led by this guy, a brilliant scramble, 21-yard touchdown pass to Scott Mitchell. We'll take another look at it. This kick high into the air. Clark will gather it in for 10, comes up to the 20, and Broderick Clark is grounded there, and look at the Cats now. They have some new enthusiasm. Hey, Coach, take us through that last touchdown. If you're going to put a quarterback that's athletic, you better keep contained. Everybody's coming. Safeties are coming. Contain is supposed to be maintained right out here by Martavius, Montavious Stanley. He loses contain. Woodson has his time just jogging along out in the flat. Plenty of time to loft the ball to Scott Mitchell for the touchdown. We'll take another look. It's a stunt. Dumerville, the omnipresent defensive end, stunted inside. Montavious Stanley was supposed to loop out. He tripped and fell. Touchdown. And all of a sudden, Kentucky's back in it. Here's Michael Bush, who just pounds forward. He's a punishing guy. Brings it out to the 29, Braxton Kelly. We've called his name a lot. The true freshman, a guy who they said had that look in his eyes. They thought he was ready to play, and they started him today. But look at Woodson now. On that last play, he got out of there. Bill. He'd been taking a lot of punishment, but he got outside, and you mentioned the containment broke down, but maybe that's where he needs to be, is running around a little more. Well, the other times he was hit, frankly, he never had a chance, and there were a couple times he held the ball too long. That time, he had a chance to get outside. Game of six, second and four now for the Cardinals, up 28-17. to 17. Brom gives off to the big guy again, and gets it to the 31, and here's Dave Ryan. Well, Gary, you know very well, momentum is such a huge part of college football, and things have totally changed here on the Kentucky sideline. After the last Andre Woodson touchdown catch, this bench is alive and well, and the crowd is going crazy. Remember, almost 70,000 fans here at Commonwealth Stadium. They're making a lot of noise. It's not easy for the Louisville offense right now. That's right. 70,752 to be exact, Dave. Coming in here, Louisville was a 22-and-a-half point favorite. Now up 28-17. Here's a beautiful fake by Brom. He throws it, completes it. And we had talked about his ball faking. He hit Barnage, his big tight end. We feel that Brom has a lot of Peyton Manning in him as far as faking the football. Well, he, he's got a lot of the Brom family in him, too. What he does is he makes the ball disappear. Great quarterbacks who are outstanding fakers can make the ball disappear from the linebackers. He puts the ball on his hip. The Kentucky linebackers respond to the run. They don't see that he still has the ball, and he just flips it out for a nice first down pass. And that exactly fooled the defense for the first down. Here is Brom back to throw on this first down. And he is able to complete it. It's Clark on the catch. 50, 45, and he'll take it to the 44, maybe the 43, a gain of 17. Broderick Clark having a big afternoon for this Louisville team. Let's go back to that play-action fake, Coach, that you were talking about. Now, if you're a linebacker, the ball just disappeared. Where is it? Watch Brom's calm. He knows he's going to be hit. He just stands there as if he's watching the football game, suddenly produces the ball, flips it out for the first down. B.J. Parsons is the guy that made the hit. Boy, his fundamentals he's, are amazing. He's just been doing it for a long time. First down now. Brom going to throw, and he makes the connection, and it's going to be... A game to the 37-yard line. Montrell Jones, we haven't called his name much. He comes up with the catch, a senior out of Louisville last year. Had some big plays for this Cardinal team. It's going to bring up a gain of six, second and four. Coach Archer's going to have to take some chances on defense. As they get into Kentucky territory, there's going to have to be a blitz. There's going to have to be something that surprises Brown and makes him pull that ball down. Double tight in alignment this time for Louisville. 325 left to go in the third. 28-17, the Cardinals on top of the Cats. A battle for the Governor's Cup. Brown is back over the middle. He completes it to Bush. Look at this guy in the open field. Man, is he alone. He gets to the 20. Bo Smith met him there. 17-yard pickup. I mean, the earth shakes when this guy starts running with the football. First down for the Cardinals. Coach Archer did bring the strong safety blitz there. Louisville alertly picked it up. If you're going to blitz, you better get to the quarterback. And when you don't, the little check-throughs come out. Man coverage down in the secondary. 
Easy first down. So Brom now 4-4 four, four on this drive, trying to reassert control of this game that they had earlier. Here's a handoff to Bush. Able to take it to the 15-yard line, and it's Lamar Mills, the former nose guard, now playing a defensive tackle in that 4-3 alignment in Slidell, Louisiana. You know, one of our guys that we visited with yesterday is Mike Arch. I had never been around him. I was delighted by this guy. He was so much fun and so helpful. Well, he has a... How shall I say? He's got great consistency as a coach. He's got that caustic wit that all defensive people, good defensive coaches have. He knows how to relate to his players. He was an outstanding linebackers coach for the Pittsburgh Steelers for so many years. Bush, by the way, now is 100 yards rushing. Here he goes again. And this time he's inside the 15 to the 14. B.J. Parsons out of Irvine, California, there to make the stop. The California kid, who they say they never know what he's going to do. He is unpredictable. Let's go down to Dave Ryan. Dave, Gary, really interested to hear this from Michael Bush when he met with him this week. He says, early in the year, like a game today, where he had the option of putting his shoulder down and creating a big collision with a defense or heading to the sideline, he'll consciously try to avoid contact to save his body for late in the season. Now, that does not apply, of course, to a goal line situation, but we've seen it a couple times today. Pretty interesting for Michael Bush. Now Colby Smith comes in, Dave, as you speak. Back to throw is Brom. Brom over the middle, the crossing pattern. The catch is made at the 10-yard line. That is Montrell Jones, Bo Smith on the tackle. As they had a third and four, and they got the first down. Just across the 10, it'll be first and goal. What Louisville is doing is they're, they're running four vertical routes, which is driving the defensive backs in the zone coverage deep, and then they're bringing coach, they're playing running backs and wide receivers, tight ends underneath. The linebackers drop. You can see it right here. It's a zone coverage. And coming across underneath is the receiver. They've done that time and again for the first down. So far, nine plays, 68 yards on this drive. Hand off to Colby Smith, and Colby Smith will be shut down at about the eight-yard line. Lamar Mills again making a lot of tackles for this front defensive wall of the Wildcats. Getting up kind of slowly after this particular play. You can see Louisville finding this game slipping away now has come roaring back and establishing a very big juggernaut offense again. Good football team's answer. They're answering Kentucky's drive. Second and goal now from the seven-yard line. Two receivers near side, the big tight end in motion. Handoff comes to the near side, and Colby Smith is shut down, and that's Darrell White. What a terrific play by White, the junior. They're very high on him. They have great expectations for him, and that was a big league play by him. It was a big play, big league play by White. It was also a big league call by Mike Archer. He anticipated the outside run. He stunted White, which allowed White to beat Travis Lefkew and get to the outside. And we have come to the end of the third quarter as this uh, battle for bragging rights. It's a showdown of the Bluegrass State. And both of these teams emotionally playing hard. And Kentucky, after getting shut out last year, has hung tough against this 12th-ranked team in the country, the Louisville Cardinals. With the coach, Bill Curry, and Dave Ryan, I'm Gary Bender. Coach, what's going to happen here? Third and eight, Louisville, third and goal at the eight. Look for something with Brom on the corner. Moving, you're on the left hash, so he'll be moving to his right, most likely, with some sort of trips, some sort of motion, maybe a, uh, some routes to try to clog up the lanes. You can see the rushing yardage, the Wildcats coming back. They have started to play much better in this football game, but still down 28-17. Rob back to throw, stepping up in the pocket, throws goal line, short of the goal line, it'll be fourth down. As Clark came back, made the catch at the one. Now, this will be the fourth time today they've had the ball inside on a third and goal. This will be a fourth and goal, and they're going to settle for the field goal. Well, people kind of chuckled when Petrino said, I sure would like to have had that cheap field goal before for the half. It's not funny now. Those three points are looking big, and he's going to take the three here if indeed they do kick it and if it goes through. Well, he missed a 21-yarder at the end of the first half. 
This is going to be a 19-yard attempt. The snap is a little bit awry, but he's still able to guide it through. And it's now a 31-17 football game. It was a very poor snap. Matt Webb's the snapper. And that holder did a great job to get it down. Harry Douglas, the ball was into his body and actually behind him, and he was very fortunate to get it down and get it through. Well, Brian Brom has certainly not disappointed. We didn't expect him to because we could see the poise of this young man in his starting debut. And, you know, it all started to really be a, I guess, a lot of great genes coming out of that Brom family. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. And oh he God. talked about his brother, Greg, who is the best quarterback in this family. We're going to get the settle bill one way or another. You know, I must have lost the coin flip or something growing up because I didn't get to play quarterback, but uh, my dad thinks he's the best quarterback. And, of course, Jeff probably thinks he's the best quarterback. And, yes, I do. <laughs> um, uh, I would think Brian thinks that he's the best quarterback, too. But that's the big argument that we, all, you know, everybody tries to plead their case. <laughs> and then Oscar, the father, thinks he's the best quarterback. Well, I saw Greg upstairs before the game. I said, are you nervous? Uh, he said, no, the only one that gets nervous is Pop. The rest of us are all cool. <laughs> Certainly Brian's not nervous. He's uh, looking more like Brett Favre every time I look at him. Well, he'll be playing on Sundays. Here's the kickoff now. It's going to be taken out by Keenan Burton. Burton a spurt across the 30. Boy, he had some running room, man. Somebody yes. had a hand on him, or that would have been a big return. That tripped up. And so Kentucky now down 31-17. 14-10 left in this football game. As we mentioned, Louisville has won five of the last six games. They started this Governor's Cup in 1994. My partner here, Bill Curry and Howard Schnellenberger. You guys got that all started, huh? Well, Howard got it started. I was uh, I, I resisted as long as possible, but we really had to do it. If you want to build football in the States, you got to have your rivalry. Bill, the head coach of the Wildcats from 90 to 96, took him back to back to postseason play here when he was a head coach. Here's Woodson back to throw, timing pattern, far side, ball up, and it's incomplete, almost caught by Glenn Holt Jr. He was running out of real estate. He's shaken up on the play. He was running out of any place to go when he the ball came down, and uh, Rod Council, who was a heavily recruited redshirt freshman out of West Charlotte, North Carolina, was defending on the play. Then Holt very nearly came down with this football. Council in excellent position, exactly like he should be. And like I said, you turn your head back looking for the football, you're usually not going to be called for interference, even if there's a little hand jostling going on with both players. A little pushing and shoving, but that won't be called unless you focus on the receiver and shove him consciously and visibly. Glenn Holt last year was uh, the MVP of the offense for this Kentucky team. He was second in the SEC in catches, had 49 catches. And uh, a preseason all-SEC pick. And uh, we'll come back. We'll update his status. 14 minutes to go. 31-17 Louisville. I don't know what happened there, do you? Either he back. Louisville with a 31-17 lead. We've got a break in the action right now because Glenn Holt Jr. trying to make the catch is down. They're still looking him over. We've been told that he had a separated shoulder before, and, Bill, we were speculating maybe that's what he landed on, but we'll uh, wait and get the official notification of that. So they're going to have to uh, come in and, uh, and assist him off the field. Well, I was talking earlier about my partner, Bill Curry. Of course, he coached at Georgia Tech, he coached at Alabama, but he also coached here at the University of Kentucky. There's a lot of stories about you, partner, but we thought we would go back. Don't, and, believe, you know, don't believe any of them. <laughs> we thought we would go back and take a look back, a flashback to Bill Curry. Look at that Who hairstyle. Who been talking to? Yeah, that's a lot of hair because I didn't have time to go to the barber shop. <laughs> when you're coaching, you don't you know, have time for luxuries like haircuts. <laughs> 
Listen, we had so many wonderful young people here at Kentucky, and I, a lot of the players that have gone out of their way to stay in touch with me are these Kentucky Wildcat players. Wonderful area here to live in, a great school and a great student body, and I, I treasure the time we had here. Well, and you know, it was fun because Joker Phillips, you, what, 16 years ago, I think you started that yeah. relationship with him, and then, of course, Mike Archer, and, and coming back here, I mean, it was like a... You came in here like a celebrity, everybody looking to you, talking to you. And, you know, Bill, you look back at those days and uh, coaching and how hard you worked. I mean, people do not understand no. what no, a commitment it's, it's it is. It's impossible. There's no sense talking about it but because people, they don't need to know. But it is 90, 100 hours a week. I mean, these coaches here on both staffs on Labor Day will be in the office tomorrow morning watching the tapes of this, and that's the same way it is all the time. And I'm sure there's a way to do it a little more sanely, but I'm not sure exactly how. Well, of course, a sobering note here is we're still waiting on the status of... Uh Glenn Holt Jr. And uh, Dave Ryan, what have you got on it so far? Yeah, Gary, standing right outside here, the Kentucky trainers, as you can see, are very busy with Glenn Holt Jr., the Kentucky receiver. Uh, he has moved a little bit now for a good two minutes. He did not move, and the trainers are looking at his left shoulder. He turned over on his own about 30 seconds ago, and now they're going to put him onto uh, a stretcher and get him out of here. But there was movement from lower extremities there, his legs and his arms, so... Although he did move for a good uh, couple of minutes, now he is moving, and that's the, the best sign, I think, right now. That's right, and of course, uh, they'll take as much time as they need. We have 14 minutes left to go in this battle for the Governor's Cup, and uh, it has been, I think, in some ways a surprising game because I think most people thought that the Cardinals might just come in here and uh, just waltz in this game dominate the game it looked like in the second quarter it was going to happen that way but you got to give kentucky credit they have fought back give kentucky credit all down the line the coaching staff special teams offense and defense well while we uh, have this break let's go back to the studios and uh we're going to join reese davis reese all right gary a game earlier this afternoon syracuse and west virginia and Syracuse had trouble getting offense going. Perry Patterson sacked in the end zone by Ernest Hunter, 15 to seven. The Mountaineers win it, spoiling Greg Robinson's debut as head coach of the Orange. Orange mustering barely 100 yards of offense. A great defense on display tonight. 7:15 Eastern Time. North Carolina State going up against Virginia Tech, ranked eighth in the land. And Marcus Vick will start at quarterback, guys. Yeah, North Carolina State had that outstanding defense a year ago. You know, you think about that uh, Syracuse game, and, of course, Louisville is headed to the Big East. Yep. And they're going to be in the same conference with Syracuse. There's a lot of changes. Of course, they're leaving Conference USA. There's. I was reading the other day, Bill, that there are 18 teams in the country that changed banners this year. In other words, they moved into different conferences. Yeah, it's really confusing. I mean, you have to sit and study. I've sat and studied, and I still get confused about who's in which conference. I want to understand where people have gone, but some of them go... Um, almost coast to coast and it's uh, it's a fascinating uh, phenomenon but I'm not sure whether it's good or bad to tell you the truth yeah and uh, the Louisville Cardinals are picked to win the the Big East and you can see the Big East now is uh, Boston College is going to be leaving and have left and they are headed to the ACC they won yesterday in Provo against BYU Connecticut's kind of rebuilding they have Dave Wanstead of Pittsburgh we mentioned Greg Robinson of Syracuse Rutgers a tough loss to Illinois yeah that's hard oh that was a hard one and then West Virginia they uh, under Rich Rodriguez are always a handful in Cincinnati and uh, Bobby Petrino you can see what his record is against new uh, conference opponents and uh I think his record's good against anybody. Non-conference well, or regular. What we're seeing there is Louisville's record, and it's not so good uh, against uh, West Virginia and teams like that. But Petrino's record, obviously, he's 20 and five, and a really nice hand for Glenn Holt, who's yeah. a marvelous player and a, a leader on this team. And we just have to hope and pray that this is a very minor injury and that maybe he um, hmm, he just got a little got his bell rung a little. Rich Brooks had walked all the way across the field to see his player. Now he's headed back to the near sideline. And appreciative fans here as Glenn will go off the field. When you look at a wonderful young man like Glenn Hope, 
and you experience what our country's experienced in the tragedy in New Orleans and that surrounding area, it sort of puts games into perspective. Yeah, it? it really does. Rich Brooks, of course, uh, built Oregon into a national power. He was there 18 years, a couple of years, the head coach of the St. Louis Rams, and went to Atlanta, was the defensive coordinator on that team that made it to the Super Bowl. Second down now, 10 yards to go as we pick up the play. Andre Woodson looking the near side, dumps it off, and that is the tight end, Tammy. We expected to see him catch a lot of passes, and he did, and that will be a first down. This is the guy that Bobby Petrino said, we're going to know where he lines up on every snap, and that's an 18-yard pickup on the play. And you see why when you see what Tammy does. He's not just a big old guy that makes a nice target. He accelerates. We don't have time to do the replay because Kentucky's not huddling, but, man, does he explode when he catches uh, the football. He was moved to tight end the final game of last season against Tennessee. He had been a wide receiver. He's 6'5", 234 pounds out of Danville, Kentucky. Back to throw Osborne. Up the field. Catch made by Keenan Burton to the 30. He made a remarkable catch, remember, at the start of the game. And he just made another nice one. William Gay defending. Burton comes down with a football. 34-yard game. And Kentucky still battling back in this game. Keenan has a very nice feel for running the routes. But I've got to tell you again, I've said this again and again, Andre Woodson has a gifted arm. That means he has an uncanny knack for throwing it to the right place. Not every single time, but most of the time. He is growing up before our eyes in this game, which bodes well for Kentucky. First down now. Woodson play action. Pulls it out. Double pumping. Throwing in the end zone. Back there. Scott Mitchell. Oh, he had it deflected. Or he might have made the catch. He made a rookie mistake. The mistake he made, he had his man. He hesitated a tenth of a second too long. And he allowed the Louisville defender to get underneath the route and get a piece of it. We're going to get a chance to look at it here. Here's Mitchell wide open. What he does is he allows Brandon Sharp enough time to just take one more step backwards so he gets a piece of the football. Brandon Sharp, part of that brother combination. He's the free safety out of Jacksonville. These two guys have played football together for so long, the two Sharp brothers, and he made a very good play there keeping Mitchell from catching a touchdown pass. Second down 10. The blitz is coming. They're coming after Woodson. He throws it over the middle. Complete to Little. Little the 20 and he's gathered in from behind at the 18-yard line. Octavia Stanley on the tackle. When you hear people talk about zone blitz and again, it's almost impossible to get replays here, but blitzes come from every direction. Safeties are coming. A corner comes. But Montavia Stanley, the defensive tackle dropped off as if he were a linebacker. He's the guy that ran down the screen. Otherwise, that thing walks in the end zone. They're going to mark the ball at the 19-yard line. First down, Arliss Beach now is coming at running back. This is Beach with the football, and he's able to get to the 15. A gain of three. It'll bring up second down. The crowd really excited right now here in Commonwealth Stadium. Sixth largest crowd in this stadium history. Well, you can accuse me of bias because Joker Phillips is like a, my little brother. I can't help it. We were just together so long, but he has done a marvelous job not only of organizing this offense but bringing his offensive units confidence back onto the field in the second half first down now at the 15 yard line for the cats approaching 12 minutes left in this football game Woodson with the hand signals to the near side who is wide receiver now he's going to call a timeout he was running out of time the play clock was winding down and so this sophomore who is growing up in a hurry and only his second start calls a timeout, and he'll go to the sideline to talk to Rich Brooks as uh, they'll retool, and there's Joker, and he's trying to find that uh, that perfect play. Well, my son called me night before last. He said, you got to calm Joker down. I've, I've talk, been talking to Joker, and he's, he's uptight. So I see Joker yesterday. I said, how you doing? He said, I'm just calm as I can be. Here's Woodson again. Marvelous accuracy to Tommy Cook. Breaking contain here when he senses that he's got an opportunity for the easy touchdown pass to Scott Mitchell. And another beautiful throw pulled down by Keenan Burton. And I say again, this is the only way you learn. You got to get out there where they're shooting with real bullets. You got to be the man. You got to get your teeth knocked out. And then you got to learn to get up again and again. Football is just like life. 
Well, you can see now they have gotten up. Last drive, 80 yards and a touchdown. This drive, six plays, 60 yards. Rich Brooks said, I'm waiting to see what kind of a football team we have. He says, we're improved athletically. We're better at team speed-wise, but we're so young. He was just anxious to see how they would respond, and he's got to be happy at this stage of the game. They have come back. Woods in underneath center this time, has Little come in motion, stick at it from the shotgun. Woods it, looking to Little, then dumps it, Tammy, has got it, touchdown! Tammy with that big paw of his, went up one hand with the ball, 15-yard touchdown against Brandon Sharp. And you can see why Louisville was concerned about this tight end. Sixty-eight yards on fifteen completions, two touchdowns. Beautiful throwing and catching. That's right. all you can say. And Louisville saying these guys won't go away. They just keep coming back. As Woodson with the strike and Tammy with a remarkable one-hand grab. Point after attempt by Taylor Baker. So Jacob Tammy, a guy who you're going to hear a lot about. As Woodson looking for his big target, and watch this. It's a heck of a play. And so, Andre Woodson, he's got to be excited. All of a sudden, he's finding some success. ESPN's College Football Sunday. Brought to you by the new Bex Premier Light. Life beckons. This place is rocking. Kentucky down 31-24, kicking off. Kentucky's had six plays at 20-plus yards in this game. It's deafening here. Kickoff is going to be hauled in by Clark, and he comes out. He started to stop, comes out, running wide, and he paid for it. A great open field tackle by David Jones. He's a true freshman. Boy, he went flying down the field out of Hunting, Kentucky. David Jones did his job. This is all about lane integrity. A big mistake by Clark, but sometimes these things end up being... Productive because he can break contain, but not not with the young Jones staying in his lane, doing exactly what he's supposed to. And Tammy, who caught the touchdown pass, is excited. We have also a penalty against Louisville. We want to mention just for a moment here that we have been told by Kentucky's athletic trainer that Glenn Holt Jr. has movement in all his extremities. So that's a very encouraging update. And we have more. We'll let you know as soon as we get it. The penalty moves it back to the four-yard line. 11.44 to go. Ryan Brom gives off to Bush, and he runs into a brick wall. I mean, that play was shut down. Excellent play by Wesley Woodyard. Now, Woodyard is an interesting story. The sophomore out of LaGrange, Georgia. He got hurt last year. He broke his leg. As an end result, Mike Archer all of a sudden found him over at his house yeah, because his Barbara. wife Barbara was going to help him get back to full health. But they called him the other son. Barbara is a guardian angel, so she just took him to her house. Called compliance to see if it was legal. <laughs> Second down and nine, and they get to Bush again, and Bush trying to get some operating room. Comes out to the 11. It'll be a third down. This Kentucky team was dominated in the second quarter, but look now. In the second half, they have reasserted themselves, and they've made a football game of it. Well, Rich Brooks now knows what kind of team he has. He told us, I don't know what I've got here. I've got so many young people, so much inexperience, especially up front on offense. We just got to see what they do when the chips are down. Well, the chips are down, and the, the pressure's on the defense right here. This is a big play here. Third down and three. Kentucky trying to get a stop. Brown back. Up the field. Ball up. And it is dropped. It was dropped by Montrell Jones. 
Jones had it, it looked like, for a stride. Antoine Huffman out of Jonesboro, Georgia, defending its fourth down. Jones had two steps on Huffman. The throw was perfect. If Jones comes down with it, the Louisville offense gets off the goal line. So now to punt it away will be Louisville. Todd Flannery to kick. He's a sophomore out of Louisville. Male high school. Keenan Burton goes back for Kentucky. Not a good kick. End over end. It's going to go out of bounds at the 41. Good field position for the Wildcats. That's only 32 yards. So the Wildcats will have it down 31-24. And they're thinking they might be able to pull an upset. So Kentucky has cut it to 7. 10-12 to go in this football game. A poor punt by Louisville and... The Wildcats have great field position. Gary, nobody is sitting down. You and I are not sitting no, down. No, we haven't Everybody been sitting standing. down. This has ended up being a remarkable football game. First down now for Woodson. Looks like they're creeping up to blitzing. The ball comes through his legs. All of a sudden, it's picked up by one of the running backs. And Bienji, Alexi Bienji, saved it. I don't know what happened there. Do you? It looked like yeah. the ball was snapped between his legs. Ball what happened? Was, the ball never, the ball never got up. This happens sometimes. It slips out of the center's hand. He slaps it on the wrong count. The quarterback's not expecting it, and it bounces backward. That is a huge mistake. Yeah, and that right was Beach and said who saved it. I had the, uh, the wrong guy, but it was Beach who came up with it, saved it. But they lose yardage. It's now second and 22. Back to their own end of the field of 45. That could be big. Matt McCutcheon, the center, the, the worst kind of mistake, and I've done it myself. It's a terrible feeling. Yep, you were the center for Johnny Unitas for so many years with the Colts and also the Packers. Here's a flip pass to Keenan Burton. Helmet comes off as he gets across the 45 to the 47 of Moby Okoye over there to make the tackle that time for the Cardinals. I'm really impressed with the pursuit of the Louisville defensive lineman. Those screens are good, look like they're going to go a long way for Kentucky, and then all of a sudden coming from inside out a big old defensive lineman who's dropped into coverage who's taught to run to the football Mike Cassidy teaches his Louisville defense you run to the football 100% of the time and they've saved some big plays third down now and 19 yards to go Woodson this time for the gun he has three wide outs Woodson stepping up he's in trouble he's going to go down this is what we were seeing in the first half he would take too much time. That's six sacks in the ballgame for Goomerville. He had ten all of last season, Bill, and he has six today. Yeah, the, the, you can, that's, everybody knows that's called a coverage sack. And uh, it's hard to see the coverage at this field because of the camera levels that we have and that we don't have. But you can see down the field that nobody's open. So he wisely pulls the ball down and has to eat it. Montreal Jones goes back. It's going to be nasty. The true freshman to punt it away. So Doomerville has had a big day. The senior out of Miami. This punt, returnable. Jones, hit and drop. Boy, I tell you, Kentucky special teams are flying around. Steve Ortmeyer is the special teams coach. has got to be happy with that. 36-yard punt, no return. We asked yesterday, who are the guys that really smoke, that really get down at Gunner? Drake Davis is one of the names that he mentioned. Big play by Davis there, and that was a huge series for the Louisville defense. What a great job they did, and yes, they got some assistance because Kentucky's offense made a huge mistake. But Louisville capitalized and absolutely slammed the door, threw them for a loss, and now their team's back out with decent field position. Louisville with the football at the 23. Push is in the backfield. Montreal Jones will go in motion to the top of the field. Brian Brom trying to get something going. Play action. Rolls out. Up the field. Incomplete. Trying to hit his receiver at the 35-yard line. That'll bring up a second down. That was Broderick Clark, the intended receiver, off his hands. It'll stop the clock with 7.43 left to go. We've talked about coverage sacks by the Louisville secondary when they just blanket the Kentucky receivers. What we're seeing here in the second half is much tighter coverage. Antoine Huffman was running stride for stride that time. 
and was able to chip the ball away. You weren't seeing that the first half. But I tell you, the bench on the near side, the Kentucky bench is up, jumping around. There is such good body language right now for the Wildcats as they try to get this football back. Second down, 10. Three wideouts on the play. Brock being flushed out, being chased. He just got rid of it. He looked up, and all of a sudden, he had Adrian Grady, a red shirt freshman, in his face, a guy who they think has been a huge surprise for them. Travis Day, number 94, does lose contain, but what we're seeing here is a Kentucky defense that's now playing inspired football. Brian Brom is getting the test that everybody wanted to see him get. Third down 10. Boy, this place is absolutely in bedlam right now. Brom on third and 10, stepping up, throws up the field, too tall. Couldn't make the connection. They're going to have to punt it away. Clark, the intended receiver. Coach Mike Archer, dealing with the number one offense in America, decides to go with man-free coverage here. Not much of a pass rush, but again, tight coverage. The guy was actually open enough that it could have been a first down. Carl Booker was running in pursuit, but Brom uncharacteristically missed him. Blannery has it blocked. Partially blocked. His last punt was a poor one. They're going to get away from it, and it's going to roll out at the 33. And Flannery, the last two times, has had difficulty, to say the least. So Kentucky with even better field position this time as they take over at the 33. Last year, they had four block kicks, and they got a piece of one there. And who got the block? Guess who? Number 18, Jacob Tammy. That's what athletes do. They get these little angles. They reach up and take the ball off the punter's foot. Little in the backfield. He goes in motion. Woodson trying to capitalize on this at the 721 mark. He throws near side. The catch is made. That's Mitchell. Scott Mitchell now playing due to the injury to Glenn Holt Jr. Mitchell had the touchdown catch you might recall earlier in this game. It's going to bring up second down and still three yards to go. Okay, Rich Brooks is finding out a lot about his football team. Yeah, well, Bobby Petrino is getting ready to find out about his team. Receivers wide left and wide right. Here is Woodson now changing the play. Ten seconds on the play clock. Gives on a handoff up the middle, and this is going to be Beach fighting his way all the way to the 10. Let's see what they mark him out of bounds. What an effort by Arliss Beach, their power physical running back. They're going to mark it at the 7. That's a 19-yard pickup on the play. What a beautiful play call. This is a nice trap. You see the guards pulling and kicking out. Trey Williams kicking out. Arliss Beach breaking tackles, ripping, driving down to the 10-yard line. So Beach, a guy who was hurt most of last year, the leading rusher in 2003 and coming in and impacting this game. First and goal now at the seven-yard line for the Cats. Six minutes, 37 seconds left. 31-24, Louisville with a lead, but the home faithful here seeing their Wildcats play them on an even keel this entire second half and with a chance to pull an upset. Here is Woodson now wanting to throw in zone. Mitchell, the intended receiver, but they weren't on the same page that time. Well, they were on the same page, but there was a defender just between Woodson and Mitchell, and he, he just decided to throw it away rather than take the chance on trying to loft it in there and getting it plucked. You can see the second half numbers on Woodson. Woodson, the sophomore out of Ratcliffe, Kentucky, North Harden High School. And I can see why Rich Brooks said he's as fine a passer as I've ever been around. And the guy has brilliance ahead of it. Beach is in the running back department. They have this time five wideouts. Tammy is split out as a tight end. Second and goal from the seven. It's going to be a run by Woodson, five, fighting for the goal line. He's just denied. That was a quarterback run from the get-go. Now the ball comes out, Louisville says they have it. And they do! Brandon Johnson came up with it. Boy, that's a remarkable turnabout. 
Woodson was fighting for the goal line. The ball came out. Now let's see if it stands. They're pointing the other way. The very fundamentals that we talked about that Woodson understands are the most important part of his progress involve ball security. For the third time today, he has not taken care of the football. It comes out. It is definitely out. And it rolls fortuitously right into the hands of Brandon Johnson. What a major change in this football game. He was getting ready to go in, and they could have tied this football game had he scored and kicked the point after. Now the ball resides inside the two for Louisville. And the pressure goes back on the Kentucky defense and Louisville offense. Bush is the running back. They're going to wedge it out with him, and he dives forward across the five to about the six-yard line. Boy, what a big, big turnover that was. All three of them have involved fumbles by Woodson. And again, I bring it up only because he brought it up. He said to us, what I must do is learn how to protect the football so that it's not knocked loose. You can see Rich Brooks explaining the plight of what happened there. The Wildcats now trying somehow to get the football back. Still a lot of time left. Five minutes and 48 seconds left. Hand off to Bush. Bush trying to go wide, giving ground. He's not going to do it. Now he fights forward and gets close to about the nine. He's still about three yards short of the first down and some pushing and shoving going on. Lamar Mills is down there. I tell you, Lamar Mills has played a strong game. He today. has, but I'll tell you, that Bush is some kind of football player. He was, was not going to be denied. He was dragging Mills and scratching and biting. He turned a three-yard loss into a three-yard game, which is very significant. Now Louisville has a chance to make this first down, and I need not say they desperately need it. Third down and four. There is Mills. We had an interview earlier with his dad. Dave Ryan had a great talk with him. Right now, Louisville's 0 for 3 in the last three down conversions. This time on a third down, they got it. Beautiful comeback catch by Montrell Jones. They needed four, and they got four and a half. Well, I'll guarantee you, Montrell walked over to Brom on the sideline. He said, man, I owe you one, because Montrell could have come down with another one. And look at the pocket presence. He knows he's going to be drilled. Roger Williams is coming hard. Good concentration and a nice catch. That was Huffman over to Trail Jones for the first down. Jones Beautiful execution. Jones is the senior. He has been around last year catching 37 balls. First down now out at the 13-yard line. Four minutes and a half to go. Bush again, kind of seeking a place to go. Bounces to the 15, to the 16, and uh, let's go back down on the sideline. Here's Dave Ryan. Oh, Gary had a bird's eye view of that Brandon Johnson strip of Andre Woodson, an incredible play that has turned this game completely around. It was a great call by the officials. He's just plucked it clean. Keep in mind that Johnson's a huge NFL fan. He tapes all the NFL games on his satellite back home at Louisville on the campus, and what he loves to do is watch them all. He'll review game tapes and break down players. He says the most complete NFL defender is Derek Brooks of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He just made his own NFL highlight film with that play, guys. And amazingly, Dave, as we mentioned earlier, he had a chance to go to MIT. Here we go. Second down and seven. Bush again. Bush running in a lot of traffic. Able to wedge it out to the 20-yard line. Jay should make that. B.J. Parsons made the tackle. You remember I said to him, oh, you like Derek Brooks? Well, you know, he had to turn down an academic scholarship to play football. He said, I did, too, to MIT. My mouth fell open. He kind of smiled and said, I just want to play football. Well, he played a big play, didn't he? Very, very bright, very impressive young man. Third down now and three. So Kentucky at another stopping point. Clock now starting to get down to the three-minute mark. These plays right here determine seasons. Arnie's the tight end. He'll come in motion. Brian gives to Bush. Bush has got the first down. He's straightened up, but he won't go down. Look at him. He just absolutely will not be denied. Gets across the 25 to the 26. And that's Woodard on the tackle, but it's a first down. Woodyard stuck him, stood him up, and you think, okay, that's it. Wrong. He bends those knees, lurches forward, takes that great athletic ability, and ends up making the first down. 127 yards. He had 137 in all three, but what a workhorse he is. 
This, is, this has been a physical, demanding, emotional battle. And right now, we have another Wildcat down on the field right now. It's Lamar Mills. Earlier, Glenn Holt Jr. was hurt. I mean, these guys are selling it out. They're giving it all they've got in this one. Well, Lamar Mills has been valiant, as was Holt in the football game. I mentioned a few minutes ago, Bobby Petrino is getting ready to find out what kind of team he has. This team has taken it off the one-yard line. And, yes, they got a, a nice play by their defense to get the ball back. But they have hammered out two first downs out to the 27-yard line. And that is how you establish championship football. That's what Coach Petrino would have expected from his offense. Kentucky next week will play Idaho State here. On the other hand, Louisville has an open date and then they will host Oregon State. So Rich Brooks, his team down 31-24, 2.58 left in the ballgame. Myron Pryor is going to come in. Now Pryor is one of these young guys that Rich Brooks has recruited. He is what you call a gray shirt. He enrolled in January, so he's really a true freshman. And he's coming to the ballgame replacing Mills. So we have a first down now, and we're talking about Michael Bush. And the fact that last year he was the guy that came in late in the game, but he has been the man. I mean, all day long running the football for this Louisville team. And this handoff goes to Colby Smith. He bursts into the open. And he's to the 50. They try to strip the ball as he takes it to the 48-yard line. Mohamed Abdullah over to make the tackle, the 25-yard gain. I think everybody was looking for Bush, and Brom did such a good job faking it that Smith all of a sudden was in the secondary. This is what you call press the digitation. Great quarterbacks make the football disappear. You make the football disappear. Look at him fake to, to Bush. Everybody's watching Bush, and you cut back against the grain with a nice trap kick out Kobe Smith exploding almost creased that thing to go to distance great job up front by Louisville we have another Kentucky player down I'm telling you right now the heat it was in the 80s today you wonder uh, that that isn't starting to have a big impact in this football game that's uh, Myron Pryor the guy who just came in though he is the uh, freshman out of uh, Eastern High School in Louisville he's coming off I don't know if uh, the leg cramps are starting to come into play this late, but um, I tell you, Bill, this has been a terrific football game. However it turns out, there have been two tremendous efforts by a bunch of guys. And, 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 you know, I haven't seen anybody kicking and spitting and all. I've seen them helping each other up. I've seen the right kind of sportsmanship among the players, and that's usually the case. Yep. It's still very warm here, and... Uh, this uh, rivalry, the Battle of the Bluegrass State for the Governor's Cup. And last year it was all Louisville winning 28 to nothing, but this time Kentucky has fought back. First down, 10 clock running, 220 left. Brown to Bush. Bush, as he got the handoff, almost had it stripped, but so strong he kept it. As Marcus McClinton eventually made the tackle, but it was uh, interesting that as he started up the field, that ball looked like it was going to be stripped. Well, Richard Gray, number 53, who's just, just come in the game, probably looked like he might have expected that it was going to be handed to him. Yeah, he if he had a little more experience, if, seriously, he might have been able to bat it out or knock it out. Kentucky just used their last time out. This is one reason that you really want to conserve those things, if at all possible. So it'll be the last time they'll get a chance to stop the clock. Well, I want to go back to something I said earlier, and you also alluded to. Rich Brooks said he didn't know what kind of a football team he had. Well, he's found out a lot about this team. He's anxious to see how much better they are. They are much better. They were 2-9 and nine last year, 1-7 and seven in the SEC. They fielded the youngest team in the conference. They showed progress late in the year. They beat Vanderbilt and came within 12 seconds of a stunning upset of Tennessee. Yes, they did. And so they've come in here, and they have given the Cardinals all they've wanted here today. And so I think Rich Brooks can say to this guy, Andre Woodson, hey, we've got a future ahead of us. We're going to win some football games. Well, Andre's feeling real bad right now. He's probably going to blame himself for a lot, and Coach Brooks is already over there encouraging him. He was hard on him when he came off the field, and once you're hard on a very conscientious young man, especially one as bright as Andre, then you got to get over there and say, oh, it's going to be okay. Get ready. We're going to get this ball back, and maybe you get to go back in the game and try to win it for us. So we come to a second down and 10 now for Louisville. Really Two, 11 left. The first down, Gary. Barnage comes in motion, as we mentioned, Kentucky with no timeout flip. Rahm on a half roll, throws it, and good short. And uh, 
That pass intended for Colby Smith. One of the few times we've seen Brom throw an errant pass. And it's going to bring up a third down. Absolutely brilliant call by Bobby Petrino. It's exactly what you want to do with your poised quarterback who never misses that throw, right? Well, Brom proves that he's human. He's not perfect. He's not going to make every throw. So this now becomes very interesting at third and ten. This could be the game. Third down ten. If Kentucky doesn't stop him here, they may be running out of time. Two minutes, seven seconds left. Bush in the backfield along with Brown. Gives to Bush. Bush straight ahead. He's got it. He's got the first down. Oh, has this guy been outstanding? There's a flag on the play. He's inside the 35. Again on the play of 14. Carl Booker made the tackle. I tell you, Bush has just been a battering ram all day long, just punishing everybody and showing that he's in tip-top shape to play as many minutes and carry the ball as much as he has today. Yes, he's a great football player, but he's got a great play call. Mason. On the defense, 12 men participated, 15 yards from the previous oh, spot. What a terrible mistake. Yeah. What a terrible mistake by the University of Kentucky. Substitution error, too many players on the field. Had they stopped Bush, it would still be walked off. Now, let me say this. Louisville still has to make another first down. They cannot just take a knee and run this clock out. Better you can get about out. a minute and 50 seconds off the clock when the opponent has no timeouts. So they'll have to run a couple of plays and try to make a first down, which means there's always a chance the ball can be knocked loose. Line of scrimmage, the 33-yard line of Kentucky. That was a great play call by Petrino. That was, that was really smart. What did we say earlier? He might be as good a play caller as there is in the country. As you see. Barnage will come in motion now for the Cardinals. Brom, Bush, Bush to the 20, to the 10, to the 5, touchdown. And this guy, when he took his time, showed the patience, showed the footwork, and then bang, he was off and running for 33 yards. There is a flag on the play. It's going to be an illegal procedure. They're going to bring it back. Boy, is Bush something, though. I mean, he's not just big. This guy can run. He can fly. I mean, a guy with this kind of physical ability. Holy really City's on the line of scrimmage offense. Five yards, repeat, for out. The rule is that you must have at least seven men on the line of scrimmage. You can have more than seven. You cannot have less. Louisville made a, and that was a huge mistake. So uh, both teams are getting tired here, and they're making the kinds of mistakes that you won't see later in the year. Substitution error by Kentucky, and now Louisville makes a formation error on a touchdown run that would have absolutely iced this thing. Now they got again to try to make a first down. Bill, that's a very good point. There's no question that when you get tired, it really does affect what you're doing. What was it? Your well, former coach, Vince Lombardi, says fatigue makes cowards fatigue of us makes all. makes cowards of us all, but I've got to tell you, they could, they could take a knee now and run this out, because it's down to one 17 and they got an extra down out of that situation they don't have to hand it off here so barnage will come in motion and brown is going to give it to colby smith as they've gotten bush out of there bush looked like he was spent that he had given everything he had and now the clock running and uh, as we mentioned kentucky does not have a timeout so they cannot stop the clock yeah i'm surprised they ran that play that, that was a risk all they got to do is take a knee now well, Bill, this has been something, though. I'm telling you, we came in here, we found out that Louisville is going to be a juggernaut again offensively. We found out, though, that Kentucky is no pushover. Both of these teams look like they could have some impact in this season. We knew the Cardinals were, but I think Rich Books has to be very encouraged. Well, I think he is, for sure. Two veteran coaching staffs uh, fighting it out on the field, the players fighting honorably. It was a heck of a football game. It was, and Brom will go down to an E, and that'll do it. So, Louisville now has won six of the last seven in this battle for the Governor's Cup. They came in here, ranked the highest they've ever been in the preseason at 12th. They will get a breather to get ready for Oregon State. Kentucky will move on to play Idaho State out of Pocatello, Idaho, here in the Commonwealth Stadium on the campus of the University of Kentucky.
Jonathan Lebovich, our producer, and Steve Kernberger, our director. Thanks, guys. The final score, 31-24, Louisville over Kentucky. For Bill Curry and Dave Ryan, I'm Gary Bender. This has been a presentation of the ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Coming up next, baseball tonight. Again, Louisville defeating Kentucky, 31-24 in the battle for the Governor's Cup. A sixth largest crowd in the stadium's history.